I apologize for the delay. We had a quick little executive meeting um, in public input. Okay, seeing none today, we have Lizzie, right? Lizzie Barrett, is that correct? I should have it right in front of me, but I don't. Um, doing the student report. Thank you. Okay, so um, it's been a pretty busy spring so far, starting off with college admissions decisions are due on May 1st for all of our seniors. So a lot of kids are really deciding on what they're gonna do for the next four years of their life or more if they do certain programs. And um, the high school environment's really embracing this like new chapter of their lives. And I know I've seen in the hallway on the third floor, there's a poster outside of Miss Kerrigan's room where um, seniors can write down schools they plan to attend in um, the later years. And then also the AP exam testing begins on Monday of next week. And um, several uh, practice exams were administered at the high school over this past weekend. I personally took the AP US history exam with Mr. Emerton. And then I know some sophomore students took the AP environmental science exam as well on Saturday. And then also a huge, um, pro uh, huge progress in the foreign language department or they call themselves the world language department now. Um, and it's the seal of biliteracy test. So basically students have the opportunity to become biliterate. They're testing in both English and then an alternate language of their choice. So um, this is like the seal that they receive on their transcript if they do pass the exam. And basically uh, there was an exam administered in um, Portuguese and in Spanish and in French. And um, five students received the seal and these were just out of the seniors. There's also juniors who did qualify, but it's kind of like a practice run because they will take the exam again their senior year to receive this um, seal on their transcript and then with their diploma. And um, Ms. Sander No gave me some, uh, basically like a student biliteracy application. If you guys wanna check this out, it was really interesting to me. This is a junior, his name is Gabriel Miranda. And um, basically this is, um, he's what we call a heritage speaker. So he grew up uh, with Portuguese in his um, home environment. He didn't take a class formally in Brazil on Portuguese. He didn't when he was younger. Um, but this is basically just like him explaining why he wanted to achieve something like this and um, why he's always been surrounded by foreign languages. And then... Um, this is the first year for this, right? Yeah, so yeah. basically, uh, this time last year, Mr. Lepret, um came to you guys and presented this program, mm -hmm. and it got passed. And um, it's something that a lot of like trial schools are in the area are working with right now. And I know Ms. Sander No, like, she runs an email chain and tries to uh, communicate with these like local schools about it, because a lot of uh, different administrators of their like, foreign language department have a lot of questions on how it's working out and what the interest is. Because you think a lot of students, like, we've all learned the same uh, years. Of, like, I've, per I've taken Spanish just through the high school, no other outside influences. And I'm only on my third year of like a strict curriculum. So like, I personally wouldn't feel comfortable taking this test. And it's interesting to see how there's so many students who are um, experiencing like language outside of their home. So, or outside of their school environment, like in their homes. So like, it's a good opportunity because there definitely was at least a dozen kids just this year alone who took it in like the trial run. That's what I was gonna ask. So so five seniors were, were awarded it. Yes. How many seniors took it and how many juniors took it as a practice? So the five seniors who took it were awarded it. Okay. And then um, the remaining seven students were all juniors all to juniors. this practice. Yeah. Okay. So if I could just for a second, just to clarify, there's, there's actually more students, about 20 students that took the test. Okay. So our juniors, the, the numbers that, that you have are mm -hmm. correct. They're, yeah. They are, um, there's a couple of factors. Not only do you have to pass the foreign language, you also have to pass NCAS in four of other areas. So there's a couple of students we're still waiting on scores for, um, because in addition to the Spanish and the Portuguese, uh, we also had Arabic and a few other students whose, whose first language, uh, language is not English. So we're waiting for their access scores to come back. So we're even hoping to have a few more, and I believe we may even have at least one student with this country, which is really neat. So that's a very high uh, level of so we're very excited. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, and then to shift over to athletics, the boys lacrosse is off to a steady start. They're currently five and five. The girls lacrosse hasn't been as lucky. They're currently one and six, but they're hoping to turn that around soon. Um, and then in track and field, uh, Mr. Pizopoulos, who is the uh, girls coach, recently won the MIAA uh, 2019 Girls Indoor Track Coach of the Year for his past winter season. So that was a big accomplishment for him. Um, 
And boys lacrosse uh, recently had a really big win against Georgetown, which is 20 to seven. And then uh, boys baseball, they recently also had a big win, 13 to zero. And the record's now two and five. And then boys tennis is currently three and three. Um, they just won a match against Malden Catholic this afternoon. In terms of performing arts, um, we had some pretty big events at the high school this past Friday. Uh, Mrs. Kane and um, Notorious hosted the Spring Fling, and they hosted four other schools, so four other a cappella groups. And um, this is a remarkable uh, opportunity as we get to util util utilize the performing arts facilities. And um, it just shows the versatility of the department because the same night we also had the Kids Night Out event for student council, which I'll get to later when I um, go over other activities. But basically, we are able to operate an event um, in the gym facility and an event in the performing arts facility completely separate. And there wasn't any like complication or intervention, which was it ran pretty smoothly. So that was pretty impressive, I felt like, because I was a part of one of them and I know friends who are a part of the Notorious event and it just, it was really seamless. Um, and then also in terms of performing arts, the French students and um, all of the drama clubs, uh, drama class students had the opportunity to see Les Miserables in the Opera House um, this past Thursday, May 25th. And a lot of students love that performance and they also opened it up to some drama club students when they had those extra tickets left. Um, and then for other events, recently we had the Eastern Europe trip, Oprah Able Vacation. So um, this was 42 students and six chaperones who attended, including Mr. Lepret and myself. And we went to Hungary, Slovenia, Germany, and Croatia. So as you may know, we had 13 cases of the stomach bug over this trip. Because um, we, it wasn't something, it wasn't from like the food or anything there. It was more like we just kept passing it amongst each other, Arms, being in yeah. the same environment, yeah. But luckily in Germany, they had these um, like miracle, like some enzyme that immediately stopped the nausea. So that was really impressive. But <laughs> basically it was still a fun time. I personally loved Croatia because that was when the sun finally came out and we got to go to the beach. And it was just a lot like Italy almost because it was a Roman port city way back and during the empires and stuff. So I thought that was really interesting. So were you one of the 13 that had it or not? No. Okay. Well, I was in my, <laughs> no wonder you have yeah. such good memories. Of <laughs> <laughs> I still love yeah. that was. <laughs> Yeah, my like friends that I was hanging around with, none of us got it, thankfully. We had a lot of hand sanitizer, though. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then in terms of other events, um, before Friday with Kids Night Out, on Tuesday we hosted Family Feud. So this is our second time trying this event. Um, we have seen kind of mixed success. We get a lot of student council members to attend because they are very well aware of the event. But we feel like in future years we can work on the publicity of it because we want to get more families more like parents and stuff attending who are like the parents of the students involved basically it's a family feud game and we develop the questions and um it's our teachers selected by the student body against uh the captains of the sports teams the following season so it was the winter sports team captains attending this event um so a lot of the sports teams who knew the captains personally and a lot of student council members who were involved in running the event attended but we still wanted to see more um participation more um involvement in the community afterwards because kids didn't really know like what was going on they they got once once they went to the event they understood it but a lot of kids like on wednesday for example were like oh like that was last night i didn't know so it's something we need to work on just as a council is just really publicizing that event um because you feel like it could be kind of like a trademark kind of like our kids night out um that we do every year and then Kids Night Out is basically when we, it's a fundraiser for the council to help us pay for those conferences that we do in the spring. Um, and basically we host uh, children from the community from five to nine. And we have like a general sports area in the gym. We have in the auxiliary gym, we have a five and under. We wanna make sure like the younger kids aren't being like balls thrown at them and stuff like that. And then in the uh, health, facilities of the middle school like the two health rooms we have um a movie room which kids love we just play like animated films in the smart board and then a crafts room which we like do crafts with them um it's always a huge success kids always have a great time um the cafeteria staff is always so helpful to us they always prepare those little personal pieces pizzas the kids love and they are a huge hit and it always that's always an easy event and it was ended up being pretty successful we got a turnout of at least 72 kids so that's that was great. very impressive it was more than our um fall and then um, for my uh, student report, uh, Mr. Bernard came up with this idea, instead of bringing in another essay, I could do the Book of Excellence. So basically, when we attend Hyannis in March, we have to uh, prepare this book. And we have all of our indicators of all the events that we run throughout the school year. And they have to qualify um, for certain um, criteria of like how we're 
really con contributing to the association. So here is just our score breakdown of how we scored this year and why we got this Gold Council of Excellence. So these are the plaques that we received this year. Um, so every year we strive to achieve this Gold Council of Excellence. We've been getting it continuously since 2016. Um, that was when Dan Madden was president of the association. So that was a huge like success for us and we've really been grateful to have that consistency over the years. And then also um, in terms of the book here, how fast is around, Thanks. it's kind of heavy. Um, we ran the, the Teen Tech Tutors Program, which I, I don't know if you remember that from past times have been here where we go and um, teach some of them how to use their cell phones. We have that tomorrow actually. Um, but basically we submitted, uh, Mrs. Gray submitted a great letter of recommendation for us to be nominated for a top 10 event award. So then we got this, um, when we were, we won as a, one of the top 10 student run events in the state. So that was huge because we've only won that one other time. And it's great to see like that North Reading out of, uh, I think the 90, three councils that attend um, or ran a top 10 project. And then in terms of Teen Tech Tutors, um, Mrs. Greer and I collaborated to come up with this a new idea to have like a safety security alert system for all the seniors to have on their cell phones because this is new ICE um, security system that like they want to implement more into like the senior um, age category. And we have someone coming from the fire department actually to go over that with them tomorrow before we go over just the basics of like the texting and the Facebook. So that was pretty interesting. I was, I'm excited to see how that goes. Cause that's, that's more so than not just the social media part of it. It's more like the safety and like the required part of it, which I think is also important when teaching them how to use it. Um, yeah, so that's everything. Thank you. So. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and how to use uh, but that has been very active. I don't think a month has gone by that there's not been a minimum of five. And they've gone up to probably 12 people. And it's a great program. And the seniors actually look forward to it. They keep tabs. So thank you. And your oh, thank you. <laughs> Techies, uh, <laughs> coming over and helping us over there. It, it really has made a great difference. Thank you. Techies also known as every young person. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, I, mean, I think it's great. I think it's great to involve the seniors too. Um, I have a, cu a couple things. I mean, I feel like since Mel's not here, I have to say something. So like the girls indoor track relay or the girls track relay, I think they won the national or the, not, the state championship again. Yeah. Right, this season. and. And, and the, yeah, the 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 kids night out or the parents night out of, you know, I've had I have young kids that I've dropped off out of the way this weekend, but that's always a great program. And the best thing of all is they hand out a list of babysitters at the end usually. So. Yeah. yeah. It is, it is I didn't get that though, so if you want to bring Yeah, it. I can definitely get that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then on the, what you said about the senior citizens, we actually, we were so excited because a lot of us, um, where a lot of us are juniors and seniors that go to that event. It's a lot of like my friend group, I kind of expanded it from that when I was a freshman. And we actually had three of them come to like the promenade um, for the junior prom this year at the high school to come see us. So that was like really exciting. Oh. Yeah. They knew how to take pictures in their cell phone. <laughs> yeah, That's that was so that, sweet. That was really exciting, yeah. Is that where you were taking selfies earlier? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you I always think Hi. of Pride and Prejudice when I say your name. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, the school committee policies. I'll hand it over to Rich and Diana. Diana, would you? Because I forgot my packet. Of course. Um, so there is just the one. This is for the second reading of um, policy EDAA, the use of school vehicles. Um, as you'll see, just as we discussed last time, item number three was revised to be more appropriate to current state and how things are handled. Okay. Can I have a motion to accept a second reading? I move to accept for a second reading policy use of entitled Use of School Vehicles, EDAA. Second. Uh, any other questions or concerns? Say none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries, thank you. And then next up we have a proposal from Allison Kane. You wanna come up? You can, um, 
Mr. Owens is here for moral support, I was told. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you can come on down, too, if you'd like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's great. Mr. Owens is the band director. People did not know that. Okay. This is his first I did. He helped me make sure I got my, uh, my, you got my shirt and my, my shirts and my uh, sweatshirt for him. Good. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's awesome. Good. Hi. Good evening. Hi. Um, so, um, the Performing Arts Department um, used to take a biannual trip, and a few years ago we decided to make it a once every four year um, trip, um, uh, an adjudication trip, but a big one, um, so that the students could go out of state and learn and grow and perform. Um, and we set it up two rotations ago to, that it would be a Disney World trip, so they can also um, include technical theater students. I happen to have a friend there who started a technical theater program, so they actually get to go in and learn about um, the electrical and the um, kind of the explosives that Disney uses and how that is a kind of a cool career. So um, next year is four years from the last time we went and um, we'd like to take the students um, back down to Disney in the springtime. We um, would have d then three different tracks going. Um, it would be um, instrumental students and music students and then theater students. And those students have opportunity to take two of three things that we would put together for them. There's classes, there's an adjudication or there's a performance piece. So we would look for either them to compete and then maybe take a class or maybe they would be a featured performer and um, then they could compete. We have to see where each group is, but they have two opportunities to work with professionals in the field um, while at Disney World. If they perform, they would perform at like Downtown Disney or there's some restaurants in like in Magic Kingdom. It depends on where we place when we submit our videos. Um, we would be taking um, the concert band, um, chorus, and notorious. So three separate groups would have the opportunity to do those performance tracks. And then the technical theater students um, would have a chance to meet with the professionals and present portfolios um, and get real world feedback if they wanted to move on either in engineering. Um, like I said, I'm gonna look at an electrical engineering track is what we're hoping. And then also take a class and go behind the scenes and see how they um, do their magic and how they run their boards and, and their wiring. And um, last time we did it, my friend put together, they got to see the, um, how they do all of the fireworks at Magic Kingdom. And then they got to go and have a close up look and ha watch them do it. Um, that night, which was a really, awesome. really cool experience. Um, so this trip is a performing arts based trip. Um, we typically travel with between 50 and 75 students. Um, all of our chaperones right now are um, on staff and if we need more, we can either ask more staff um, or look, look elsewhere, either parent volunteers, um, and we'll go Mrs. from there. Mrs. Babel might want to volunteer yeah. as a uh, right. I, and it's, <laughs> it's so fun. It's so, uh, and, and it's relatively easy. They're so fun to travel with. Um, we typically fly down on, sat on Wednesday and we stay through Sunday. Um, uh, sometimes if flights are a little bit better Tuesday night, we have to outweigh the costs of whether that another hotel room is how much money you save on a flight. Yeah. Um, I do all the booking myself, so we take out the middleman. Um, I used God to do, yeah, but it saves so much money yeah. by taking out that middleman. So we, that's why we start a year in advance. We have seven fundraisers set up for next year that all students can participate in or not. But it, um, we did four years ago have students earn all but $200 of their trip if they, when they participate, participated in each of those events. Again, how much they want to do, um, we do offer it for the families and, and those students. Um, uh, it, we're guessing $1,400 at the bottom of the handout. There was a kind of a general cost breakdown of what I could get right now in talking to like the flights, you know, they don't book until six months out, nine months out I can request. So I, I took the basis of the numbers of what, what it was right now and what I could get if we were going now. Same thing for the, um, the transportation and everything else. Now the bus transportation, our Music Boosters is going to do some fundraisers and um, try to pay for all of the transportation, not flights, but all of the bus transportation to and from airports and everything we need down in Disney because we have to hire perf um, a private bus to take us behind the scenes and, and everywhere um, each day 
So we can take public transportation when you're on site, but we have to do some special transportation behind the scenes. So the music boosters have some plans for that to pay for that, which will then um, lower the cost as well for the students. Um, uh, we try to keep the students <laughs> in school as long as possible. So last time we left like Wednesday, early afternoon, so they were able to attend their early morning classes and then go. Again, it depends on the flights that we'll end up getting. Um, they don't miss no AP time because this spring is an important time, so we make sure they're in classes and back home in time for all of the academic rigors that they have this time of year. And yeah, and, and, and I'm not, we're not capping it, although we seem to be very consistent in that 50 to 75 the last 14 years that we've been traveling, so we'll see what happens. Very ambitious. Yes, very. So you um, go for, you, got, you have a four day, sorry, go ahead. I would say, um, <laughs> what are the age ranges? Eight, of, for the students? Yeah. It's ninth through 12th grade, and we go once every four years. Okay. So uh, this would be the ninth graders' only chance to attend a, a trip of this magnitude. We do try to take a trip to New York every couple years um, for one night, um, or sometimes two, depending on, again, how it susses out. Um, but a, a trip of this magnitude, we feel that um, it then allows the students maybe other opportunities to do the international club, or if another group is attending a trip in that way, they're not always beholden upon waiting for just this one trip. You, you get one in the four years. No. Obviously, something comes up. Well, we bro you know, approach that, but it's a lot. So one every okay. four years. Okay. <laughs> so if, if, if you're going to, you get a four-day park hop, uh, park yep. hopper pass. If you get there late on Wednesday, what days are you doing it on Sunday before you return home? Yeah, so last time we got there about 4 o'clock on Wednesday. We did downtown Disney on that night. Then we did um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And our flight wasn't until like 8 p.m., but I, we got a direct flight. Mm -hmm. So it was 8, and we were home at like 9.30. And so we actually went all day um, Sunday. Um, it is going to kind of depend on where all that lands. It was just tiring me out. And, and then in the middle of that, they can go... Like how many hours a day are they doing performances and learning? And how so many? normally a class or so is between four to six hours. Okay. Um, so it's and what what I try to do it, again is schedule it so it's kind of compact. Last time I was able to schedule it so all the students were taking classes like Saturday morning, and so it wasn't us constantly running this class and then had to run here. Mm -hmm. So there was someone with instrumental and someone with theater and someone with um, vocal, and they were all in those classes. And then we met up for lunch. And then the kids got to go into the park about two o'clock and enjoy the day in the park. Sounds, sounds tiring. <laughs> that's fantastic. Fun. Absolutely. The longer you're around Mrs. Kane, this is just kind of how it is. <laughs> <laughs> this is Mrs. Kane. <laughs> Excellent. Kind of some truth to that. I don't know when she sleeps. I don't know when she sleeps. I, I, Thank you. All food, Thank you. all a hotel, everything, all three meals, everything is included in the price. Students yep. um, would not have to bring any additional money if they if they didn't need to. Well, I think that way we make sure that they are eating and. I feel like at every school committee meeting we end up talking about how great the performing arts are here. So. Oh, well, thank you. You two are a big piece of that. So thank you. And. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's right. see. Uh, motion. Yes, I do need a motion. I mean, I'll, I'll do, I'll make a motion to, do we do endorse or just approve? Approve. Um, usually it's, it's overnight. Yeah, it's not uh, approve. It's no. endorse. It endorse? We've, I think we've used the word approve, but yeah. You, yeah. I think either yeah. one's. I'll make endorse. a motion to endorse the North Reading High School Performing yeah. Arts trip um, the 20, for the ninth through 12th graders. Second. Any other questions or concerns? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Wonderful. Thank You're you. You're welcome to join us. Maybe I'll bring Bye. back some ears. I might. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much, y'all. Thank you. Really appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my wife. I have Good job, to Mr. Rollins. My thing. kids are excited to see this trip. They were like, oh, this yeah. <laughs> The school committee thing. I have to go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, right. Does that fall under professional this development? Really work? Yes. I mean, like, they actually are watch, they're actually watching those. They probably know I don't have to. All right, next we have um, <clears throat> Dr. Patrick Daly um, for the fifth grade health curriculum. <laughs> you good, huh? <laughs> oh, yes. I got through a little bit. Well, thank you folks so much. <clears throat> we have, um, since I've been here, actually before I got here, we updated and um, 
chose a new video, and we've been showing that same video now for over 10 years. Um, we felt that it was time to update the video. It's a little bit, it's a, I don't know if any of you have had the pleasure of seeing it with the younger children, but it was, it's a little bit corny video. It's definitely, um, you know, kind of a vanilla topic. Um, it, it's, you know, it was definitely um, chosen with care. Uh, but we, we formed a group this year to choose a new video called We're Growing Up. It's an 11 minute video, 30 seconds. Uh, we decided not to screen it tonight, but we will be screening it for parents as we always do. Um, it's the same providers we've used before, but it's updated, just a little bit more relevant uh, for kids today to view. Um, and so we had a team that reviewed this video, includes our administration, our nurses, our PE health teachers, um, and our, our PE curriculum leader who's been very helpful in getting this form. So it talks about the human body, reproductive systems, changes that occur during puberty, acne, the need for deodorant, things like that. It does not talk about sexuality or sex. Um, and you know there is it goes from sort of this video to we watched this video again in sixth grade um, and then high school we talk about STDs so there is a bit of a gap there in our in our middle school that we'll we, we, we will be looking at in more detail moving forward um, but right now our middle school curriculum kind of repeats the um, the fifth grade video so the middle school this year will still continue to show the previous video that we used they've already done that for half the year they're doing it for the second year but we're ready uh, to have a different video this year. So one thing that's a little bit different, we've learned from the middle school, we've learned from many other districts, and I've worked very closely with other districts on, on this as well, and also with our um, some guidance from the Department of Education to sort of improve our program and make it more inclusive for all students. Um, and so we're gonna show the video in a heterogeneous group. So students are gonna watch with their homerooms. In the past, we segregated. Boys went one place with the, with the male teacher, girls went another place with the female teacher, and we found that um, parents often said to us at the at the screenings, um, well, don't the boys learn about the girls and the girls learn about the boys? And we said, well, that happens next year. And, and a lot of people felt like they, they want that empathy. They want to learn a little bit about what other folks are going through. We wanted to be sensitive to that. We also want to be very inclusive and sensitive to not all students are experiencing changes exactly as described in this video for a variety of reasons. Their systems may not be designed that way. There's different ways to, to, to have a child. There's adoption. There's other things that are out there. So we want to be as inclusive as possible. So we're going to design a, a, a program where the students watch with their, with their mixed group class. There'll be a male. Uh, phys ed teachers are there, the nurses are there as well. Students will then have the opportunity to go with either group for some small group discussions. And this has worked really well in other schools. Um, you know, one of my concerns, obviously, and, and many others, is you know, you, you want students to be able to ask questions and be free to ask. And we always have a, an anonymous box as well for students to ask questions in there. Um, and so we, we're very confident that this is going to work well as it has at the middle school and as it has um, in many other schools around the Commonwealth. So um, that's, that's a slight change this year in addition to the video, but we're, we're very interested in this um, moving forward. The um, presentation is always available to parents, so parents do have the right to opt their children out of the video. So we, we do a screening, we piggyback, we've done this probably the last five years now, we've done a piggyback on the middle school night. So the parents are already all together, they're here for the middle school presentation, and then at the end we um, take out the popcorn and we watch the movie for just a few minutes. Um, but no, it's great. And the parents uh, stay and they watch the video and then uh, the nurses are great, they come out, The you know Beth Weiss, our curriculum leader, is there and uh, the principals are there and they, we address questions and, 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 uh, and everything gets shared at that time. So the, the units themselves um, are usually shown in June. So the parents get to view the video and then the letter comes home. If they do want to opt out, they're able to opt out um, and have um, an alternative. I did get a question about what the alternative is. So we would have a similar, um, you know, a health topic that students would be able to, to uh, participate in. It, it actually uh, is, is pretty rare that someone opts out. I think when folks see the video, they realize that this is, uh, this is appropriate for their child, but that it's always there right in their option. Any parents that can't make that viewing, though, they can contact me and, and I'll do a screening at the office. We don't just, we don't post it online, we don't send it out. We, you know, it's, we, we have a very careful system uh, for, for, vote, for viewing the video, and it's worked very well for, for many years that we've done that here. So, um, yeah, so that, that, that's the next step is to, uh, is to move forward. The, the video is usually shown, um, you know, in, in a Friday or, or so in June, and the, it's one of the uh, things that we do towards the end of the day because we don't want the students 
giggling and talking about it all day. It's one of those things that we, you know, we kind of do towards the end of the year and then when they're ready. Kids are at all different places in fifth grade, and you know, for some, it's you know, some of the information they're not ready for yet. But then some, um, and they, but they they need to hear it because they're that age. And some they could have used it a year ago, you know, um, with with different things with their body and acne and deodorant and all those things. So it's it's a good it's a good program. It's a good message, and it's worked very well. So I, I guess I'm just. You know the the few changes, new video, and some of the some of the presentation. It's been really well researched, but I'm just asking for um, approval, I guess, of those changes before we move forward this year. Is yes. it for this year, this fifth grade class? Yeah. It is. It is for this. Yeah. So it, the change would be for this year's fifth grade class, right? So and then it would there would not be a change for the sixth grade this year. So next year, when those kids uh, go to sixth grade, they would then use this new film moving forward ask you another question yes please. is there anything different from the first video to the second in terms of scope of what they cover there is not at all mm -hmm. no um, there it's it's very much and the superintendent's seen it as well um, yeah, it's, I, I was gonna add a comment from, yeah please the questions were done just and Patrick did we did view the video together we, we, he, we Patrick's been talking about this for a while and, and in the end I think the goals of, of making the change I think were appropriate but we decided that we thought you should all hear about it because it's it's significant enough of a change, especially with the ch students viewing it um, together, boys and girls together, mm -hmm. um, that you should be aware of that. But I think the objectives of, of the film are it's it's li less about the scope than it is it's modernizing, and I think the pro you know it's, the film is more mm -hmm. I think it's more up to date. It's done you know fairly well I think for, you know to engage a student, but also I think the um, the plan for for showing it. Um, together in a homeroom was different enough that you should be aware and I think I think that approach is is yes. I mean I asked the question when we were talking about it you know that I think there's enough here that each should each gender should see what the other gender is is, is likely to experience too and yes. so yeah there's no topics that are introduced that were not introduced previously it doesn't yeah, go any no. further it doesn't it doesn't introduce anything there um, I think it's very much in line with what the other film was in terms of mm -hmm. its content it does it's just it's it's it is more, more sensitive it's more 2019 yeah right. more exactly. sensitive to the to right. the world we live in and uh, updated and t-shirts are updated all those kind of things yeah it's, it, it, it feels a little bit more like a the kids can identify I think with right. the message so. right so what, what, what was the cadence of videos before and what is it now it, it's the same it's still I think it's the same I think fifth, it is it was yeah. fifth grade before and then oh, the next yes. the next is next video or anything is in sixth grade it's so sixth they, grade. they watch the same video again the next okay. year yeah and they watch it it's just a little bit different lens now because you're a middle school student you're seeing things a little bit differently um, and so that's um, you know and again that's something that we're looking at too as we continuously improve our curriculum and seeing what middle school looks like there is a bit of a gap you know to go from that to you know STDs in high school so it's like yeah. we need to talk about um, we have a healthy relationships unit in, in middle school right now that's working very well but mm -hmm. that's something that as we continuously improve we'll be you know we'll come back more to talk about that in greater detail before those changes. Yeah so just just to, to, to clarify that in my mind so you that's something you're working on uh, just as part of your curriculum development over the next couple of years. We are yeah we this year at the middle school we've been looking at curriculum called project here Mm -hmm. And uh, there are some units that are part of that program. Um, that's that's part of a multi-district grant that we that we received, um, and so we are not in, in putting that uh, unit into place now. But we're looking at that unit and saying maybe there's pieces there that absolutely could work. Um, again, try not to push the envelope here, but to make sure that what's delivered to kids is, is healthy, healthy and safe. Um, but at this time, at middle school, all they're watching is the video from last year, which is similar to this very very similar this this did lose its catchy jingle we had a very catchy jingle <laughs> on the other one um, that I, I think the adults like better than the kids <laughs> so we'll we'll miss the jingle but it's time to retire the jingle Wait, now you said that you can ask questions or put a question in a box yes would you do that after the video and when would the question be answered so that <clears throat> the uh, they have different ways of, of handling that but I, I think there are some questions that may be um, you know, great for the whole group, and then so the person would do that and screen it out. Um, we talked about this, and we've had we had a great meeting with the the team that we were presenting. One one piece of feedback we received was because another message was that's a better question to take home and ask your parents. And we've we're now adding to that the additional question of is this something you're comfortable going home and asking your parent? Because mm -hmm. if the child's uncomfortable asking the parents, that's why they're asking at school. And if we just say go home and ask your parents that, but at the same time. Put that conversation. Yeah. 
we would have a conversation with the nurse, with the principal, with the school if there's a question that comes up that we feel the parents should come forward with. And so that's usually not what happens. It's usually not at any kind of level that they're not comfortable asking. A lot of kids put in certain questions. They try to get a laugh out of the room, you know, and those mm -hmm. get screened out if they're not appropriate. Um, but most of the time there's just a lot of questions about feminine products and hygiene and those kind of things. And um, the nurses have done this for many years. They're, they're ex on the PE teachers as well. Um, and, and they're all pretty excited about being able to do it together. I think this idea of just, you know, and they might each be able to feel the question and feed off of each other. They're, they're pretty excited about that. Very good. All right. All right. Um, I believe we need a motion to um, update the fifth grade health film. Sexuality curriculum. Yes, yeah. I don't have it in front of me. So. I, will, I, 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 will, I will make a motion to a second. accept the grade five health and sexuality curriculum update. I'll second. Perfect. Any other questions or concerns? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. I'll have to come by and Thank you, Patrick Taylor. I have to see the old one. I want to know what that jingle is. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just around the corner. <laughs> That's <laughs> Rich, can we change our evaluation grades? That's well, I, think I, have everything. I, I think I have everything. I have everything. The only thing I really needed so was the evaluation. Thank thing, you. Which I have on my. Thank you. Okay, because I can't. I'm giving mine. Oh, that's okay. Health I, I read. I. I. I just, okay. Just, just let me know. That's, that's, that's the only one I really. On, like being uh -huh. prepared for meetings and. <laughs> okay. No, you know what, Ginny? You can hand me the uh, the donations packet too. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. There we go. You can have mine. Just have mine. Okay. So, good evening. Um, so we have a very short, um, but I think informative budget presentation, um, and we hope that the committee is be prepared to take a school budget vote um, this evening. So in your packet, what there was a couple of handouts. There was a summary document um, that I hoped would capture the the highlights of what was discussed at the April 24th budget workshop um, and uh, the administrator's recommendation to balance, uh, to bring the FY20 school budget into balance based on the, the current gap of the final revenue plan of the town. Um, so this short PowerPoint, which I'll go through and, and just talk about the highlights, kind of, I, I hope, summarizes the conversation that took place on this April 24th, the school committee workshop. Um, you know, for the, for the public. Um, so the, the FY19 um, budget appropriation, again, a little over $30,746,000. Uh, uh, the recommended budget that was previously recommended at a couple of presentations now at the public hearing, as well as the preliminary budget presentation in March, uh, was a budget of a little over $32 million, 83320 uh, so we were looking for a 4.3% increase. Um, the final revenue plan as of April 26th, and I think it's fair to say that the last meeting of the finance planning team, which took place on that Friday, April 26th, um, that this will be the final revenue plan that we will head into town meeting with. Um, so the school department uh, guideline um, and recommendation for uh, the, that revenue plan is 31 million seven fifty seven seven. 73, that is a 3.3% increase. So this budget gap, based on what we previously recommended at the public hearing, uh, was just about 1%, and that's $325,547. So that is the, uh, the amount that we kind of were um, taxed with sort of workshopping at the workshop, and the administration presented this um, attached plan that essentially is changes to our original budget recommendation um, and would essentially balance the fiscal year 2020 school budget. Um, the first item on the list is actually an addition. So after we released the budget and presented the preliminary budget, um, we sort of get the, the early uh, you know, childhood preschool registrations kind of come in at the end of January into February. Um, it came to light around that time that based on the enrollment of um, students that would be entering eligibility for early 
uh, childhood education, the preschool program, uh, we have a, a RISE program. Um, that enrollment had significantly increased and in the need was an additional early childhood pre-K classroom teacher to work within this RISE program, which is housed at the little elementary school. So um, we would see this as a level services adjustment. Um, it's, it's really a state mandate that we uh, need to address and service these students that are eligible for services in this program. So that would require an addition of a classroom teacher at the cost of $57,889. Um, we then went through uh, you know, a variety of, of um, some changes in our assumptions, our revenue assumptions that certainly made uh, the gap uh, certainly a less of a number to, to uh, address. And the first one was savings we had identified over the last several weeks through our special education out of district tuitions as well as additional revenue that we will be receiving through the state's circuit breaker extraordinary relief program. So we had submitted a file, a claim for extraordinary relief this year. Um, if you may recall, we received about $131,000 in this current fiscal year also for extraordinary relief because we qualified for the first time with our claim last year. Um, so it's kind of unusual. We haven't had a couple of years in a row where we've qualified for extraordinary relief through the state's uh, circuit breaker program. Um, I think we've had a couple of extra, you know, ordinary years and some uh, certainly, uh, you know, costs that have been on the rise based on, on our ability to meet um, certainly students' needs. And uh, we, we felt we were close to that qualifying amount this year, so we did submit a claim. And um, certainly the Student Services Director Cynthia Conant did, did an excellent job working through the file and meeting the requirements that um, the state requires. It is, it is, a, it is quite a bit of a, a large task and quite a bit of work, but we are very confident um, that with, through a combination of a couple of students that we were previously carrying the preliminary budget that we feel will kind of progress um, or graduate their program at the end of the school year, which we weren't sure previously, coupled with this additional revenue um, through the state's extraordinary relief program, um, you know we feel we can make this um, recommendation of about a two hundred and fifty thousand nine hundred and thirty-six dollar amount of, of savings to our budget through um, both tuition savings as well as an additional revenue, which would increase that circuit breaker offset to the budget. That breaks down about a hundred and fifty thousand dollar assumption through the additional revenue through the extraordinary relief program and about $100,000 of tuition savings um, through these two students. The th uh, third item on the list is the full day kindergarten offset. We felt reasonably confident as we, over the last several weeks, as we began to look at the full day kindergarten numbers, um, that enrollment, as we know, is up this year by about you know, 25 uh, or so students. So we felt reasonably confident that the original uh, uh, assumption of what that full day kindergarten revenue would, would yield was relatively conservative, and this essentially assumes an increase of additional 10 students, which we know we do have. Um, so we felt this was a reasonable adjustment to make of about $45,000. Uh, these last two items were, uh, as you may recall, we considered these two positions that were reflected in our recommended preliminary recommended budget as uh, above level services. Um, although they were um, operational needs that we identified and did discuss at the public hearing uh, in depth, um, as well as at the workshop on April 25th, 24th. Um, you know, these are certainly two positions that we would cert certainly love, love to have on staff. We did feel there was an operational need and, um, for them, um, but you know, certainly they didn't take precedent over the level services adjustments for the enrollment needs at the kindergarten level, as well as this additional pre preschool teacher position, and as well as the NRPS 2021 academic positions that had focused at the secondary level to ad advance foreign language offerings at the middle school and both STEM and STEAM offerings at middle school and high school level. Um, so we weren't really prepared to, to um, you know, we really felt that if we were not to, uh, if we were trying to fund these positions, it would have required us making reductions elsewhere and either reducing expense budgets, which we 
don't want to do at the school level. Those, those budgets have been, have been cut before, have been level funded for a number of years. We've worked hard to, to restore um, those expense budgets to an appropriate <coughs> level. For the pure pupil spending level that the principals have to work with, that's the instructional materials, the instructional technology that uh, really impacts the classroom. We didn't, we didn't want to kind of turn to that area. Um, most of the other items that we increased in the budget were fixed. They were, they were con due to contractual salary obligations or contractual fixed costs through uh, maintenance contracts and busing contracts and so forth. And we didn't want to turn to any existing personnel and staff that we have. So we, um, although we'd love to be funding these two positions, we felt um, that, that that's, this was the, the, the least harmful recommendation to balance the budget. And I'll just recall uh, 22,500, that doesn't, ref that reflects a smaller amount because uh, the cost of that Florida custodian is actually greater than that, but then you have to put back the overtime savings by not having that position. So it nets to 22.5. And then the facilities engineer was an $85,000 budgeted salary position, but it nets to 65,000 by not having that position. You subsequently had to increase the contractual maintenance, building maintenance line item. And that, that amount was $20,000 that we've talked about. So these four things really gets us to a balanced budget, the 325, 547 reduction. Um, and I think it's fair to say if it was not for um, the work of, and I'm gonna credit Cynthia Conan and, and student services to be kind of forward thinking and to, and to be aggressive in uh, looking at all additional revenue that might be available to the district. Um, you know, it would have been easier to not maybe take a close look at it this year, given we qualified last year for extraordinary relief through the state's program. Um, but we, we, we did, and I think that is um, been instrumental in the recommendation we're making this evening to, to balance the budget, as you can see. If it was not for that additional revenue, we'd be having a much difficult conversation this evening. Um, so as a summary, what does the FY20 budget then fund? You know, what are the new positions that would be added in fiscal year 20. And I think I've said all along, the FY20 is not really a fancy budget, there's not a lot going on, but at the same time, through very little uh, money and little investment, or um, I think we're, we are doing a lot with the FY20 budget, and I, I believe that it's, it's a high impact. Um, we are making the commitment to provide full day kindergarten for every family that desires such, through funding, meeting that increase in enrollment by funding an additional section sections of um, full day kindergarten and that kindergarten teacher and that kindergarten paraprofessional allows us to achieve that. As I said, this is, you know, we have the state mandates, special education, this allows us to meet that and this is really uh, something that we need to do. Uh, so we do, do fund an additional special education early childhood teacher. And then the NRPS 2021 positions um, that were recommended, the academic teacher at the middle school that would enhance foreign language. Um, and the academic teacher that would focus the kind of high school K through 12 focus on digital learning and STEAM. So we talked a lot at the budget workshop that you know we're achieving a lot with this 1.5 of NRPS positions. Um, in a lot of ways, those positions are sort of coupled with an internal restructuring of some existing staff that's in some cases been uh, current currently been like a vacancy due to some you know, staff attrition and turnover. Um, but so we, we achieve a lot um, academically by expanding foreign language, something that's been a huge priority um, and been listed in our strategic plan in our PS 2021 for several years, how to expand foreign language um, at the middle school, allow the exploratory program to be offered much earlier and then provide um, additional Spanish and French offerings at, at an earlier grade level. That allows us to do that. Um, the internal restructuring of that digital learning uh, computer staff then allows us to achieve um, the middle school schedule alignment, a plan to bring sixth, seventh, eighth grade schedule more into an alignment, which really has a long-term um, benefit. Um, there's an efficiency gain there, both from an operational standpoint of, of scheduling and an efficiency gain of using both instructional and support staff at the middle school. Um, and then the high school position, high school position uh, this is really is a need because of some of that internal restructuring of existing staff in the digital learning area to be focused more in the kind of a hybrid middle school classroom, um, digital learning support, co-teaching. Um, it really developed a need at the academic level to 
order to offer the computer in the, in the, in the science, technology, engineering, mathematics area, um, and also control the class sizes in, in those offerings as well. Um, so that amount, 259,826, 4.5 FTE, um, I think we're, it's fair to say, I think we're doing a lot, um, both to meet level services and to, and to advance um, the academic program. This year, that program would focus on the secondary level in our, in our requests. Um, so the conclusions, what does the FY20 budget accomplish? As I said, I, you know, I think we're, we're doing a lot with a little, in my opinion, in FY20. We're meeting our contractual obligations with employees and employee unions. That's always the biggest priority, because that's things that we have to do. Um, and that impact in this budget is about 2.2, 2.3% to meet our contractual obligations um, with employees and employee unions. That's not just the teachers, that's all the, our, our bargaining agreements, the smaller support staff agreements, instructional staff, administrative staff. Um, and then it includes additional staffing to achieve sound student, teach, student uh, teacher uh, ratios, full day kindergarten for all families, as I just mentioned, advances the academic program at the secondary level with an emphasis on expanding opportunities in foreign language and STEM, um, meets the needs of all students, in particular the district's high need student population, certainly the funding of the, the early childhood um, special education teacher and the RISE program. Um, include, and includes funds to meet the operational needs of all five schools and four campuses, including the restoration of extraordinary maintenance and small capital line items. So I was, myself, personally, was very pleased to see us not have to turn to those areas, those restoration amounts, when we tried to balance the budget, which we've had to turn to the last three or four years. I've certainly seen a need to, to uh, restore those line items, particularly over the past uh, 10 months or so of this fiscal year. Um, as we all know, this building is massive. There's a lot of highly technical equipment, um, not only on the roof, but throughout the building. And things, um, you know, it's, it's, it's getting, you know, it's five or six years into the building. And there's, there's gonna be needs that arise and we need a line item to turn to in the extraordinary maintenance area. And there's also small capital needs that the principal's request that don't meet the requirements of large capital through the CIPC. Um, op capital plan that really needs to be $25,000 or greater. We might we have smaller equipment needs, smaller maintenance leads to keep the schools running. Um, you know, that would mainly focus at the elementary level, uh, but there are needs there as well. So I think that's a big win and a big gain um, that those items have been restored. So the financial risk. So there's always some risks in every budget that you put in. There's always sort of inherent risk. You're always making assumptions. There's no guarantees in a lot of ways. There's, there's always some volatility with any budget, especially a budget of a little under $32 million. Um, so what are some of the risks, potential for additional outside and or change in placements with increased costs? That's always present, it's present today. We, we know what uh, we, we need to do, we know that that never is, is, is volatile in the sense it can change. Uh, reliance on some one-time revenue. Um, so as we have in the past, FY20 is no different. We're relying on the fact that we'll end the year um, with um, some, some funding that will have, that will make available and advance progress forward for next year to help, to help the FY20 situation, and that's no different in fiscal 20. Um, so we're certainly, the circuit breaker, you know, program, um, we're assuming that we're gonna prepay $100,000 of tuitions with money that will be available at the end of this year, which I'll make a presentation that's a little bit later this evening about the status of the FY19 budget. Uh, these are all areas I think we'll have no problem um, a meeting uh, this year, but it certainly in some cases can put some pressure on subsequent years. Um, the estimated teacher attrition savings may not be realized. That always exists, although I think our number this year is comfortable. I don't have a, a huge level of um, you know, you know, anxiety over that number or, or angst over that the number that we've budgeted this year. Um, but the budget does assume that they will have a number of retirements, many of which we know at this point, and some turnover. But in the, in the event that that doesn't happen, you know, the, special, the salary budget could be underfunded at the start of the year, but we don't anticipate that, that to happen. Um, obviously the winter this, this year, there wasn't maybe a ton of sn large snowstorms, but there was a lot of small storms. Um, and, you know, the severity of that winter, there were a lot of cold days this year, a lot of heat and degree days were up this year. Gas budget was up a little bit this year. Um, but snow and ice we know is difficult to predict. 
And the state budget may not fully fund circuit breaker revenue offset projection. That's always a possibility, although I will say the state always supports the circuit breaker program historically. And I would have a high level of confidence that would be the case as the FY20 budget moves through the legislative process. The House budget already put more money into the state circuit breaker program than the governor. And I would expect that the Senate Ways and Means Committee would support that increase to, to fully fund that program. Um, so I think it's, although, you know, I think it's a safe, some of the assumptions we've made are relatively safe, although there's always inherent risk. The food service program, there's no general subsidy offset to the food service program in this budget. Um, we've taken that out over the last two years. The food service program is on, is on um, pace to break even again this year, but it, it's, it can be difficult to predict. Enrollment changes and so forth. So I think those are the big highlights of risks. I've highlighted these in the past. Thought it was just important to bring them um, up again to this evening as you prepare to make your, your final vote. Uh, but I think overall, the, the, I think this last statement is, in my opinion, is key. With the adoption of the FY20 budget that we're recommending this evening, the balanced budget, the administration does feel that the district is in better position to address unforeseen costs than it has been in recent years. I, I think we have the ability to address some of the unforeseen with the extraordinary maintenance line items being there, not going there and reducing expense budget areas. Um, I'm very hopeful um, that there's a town meeting warrant article um, at the June 10th town meeting that would adopt a special education reserve fund if supported at town meeting of in, in the amount of $100,000, which I think would be key. That was talked about at the select board meeting last Monday evening. So we greatly appreciate the finance planning team and the select board kind of supporting that warrant article that puts us in much better uh, financial st state should something happen that unforeseen and unknown. So I think we are, although it's always risk, I think we're in better shape than we have been in the past. And I can stand here to this evening and confidently state that. Um, so that is really um, the updates um, to, to our budget this evening. Uh, so again, I think we're asking the, the committee to support an FY20 budget of $31,757,773, which is a 3.3% increase over FY19. So this is the, uh, the motion that you know, we're generally open for questions and, and, and discussion, but we, we would ask when the committee is prepared that this motion be, be made. Any, any questions? Thank you, Michael. And you're being very um, <clears throat> gracious by just giving Cynthia Conan the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Credit. credit. The credit, yes. Thank you for coming up with that extra. Uh, oh. You did a lot of work and you should be recognized as well. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah. If I may, um, on the risk page, is there anything? It sounds like the answer is no, because you 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 seem pretty sanguine about all of them. But is there any one of them that stands out as something you'll keep a particular eye on this year? Or yeah, I think um, I definitely I will say I have a higher level of confidence that when I stood up here in the, in the past two fiscal years that. It was more of these items gave me a little bit more um, angst or reasons of concern than I, yeah. I do today. Mm -hmm. I would say it's the very first one. It, it, they go, they kind of almost go in order of, of course, they're listed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because it's just, you know, you just, you almost have no control. That's a wild card, that complete. Item. That's a complete I wild card, yeah. With the state, um, I'm fairly confident they will fully fund the state program um, and having the ability to, um, you know, potentially have a reserve fund to turn to if that were to be supported at town meeting, I think puts us in much better standing than we've been in a long time to address that unforeseen in that area. Yeah. Thanks, and I would second the chair's comments of uh, thanking you and Cynthia and everyone for all the work on this. We get to sit up here and go, hmm, <laughs> but that's uh, the, the hard work is, is, is done by you guys, so. Thank, thank you. you. Could I extend that comment? And I thank you both for acknowledging that and others too. I know it was said at the workshop the other day and, and, it, and it is true. Michael and, and Cynthia did collaborate very closely on uh, the work that needed to be done to pull the file together to submit for the extraordinary relief. I, I think too though, the, um, the administrative council as a whole, we, we start talking about the budget in October, yep. believe it, and, and, and the work that gets done to bring us to the point tonight where we feel we can present to all of you um, 
a budget that we feel is appropriate um, is, is significant. And I, I want to acknowledge their efforts too. And, and I, I also do want to um, call out the work of, of the chairman and the vice chairman for um, their representation of the committee on the finance planning team this year. You know, you were both fairly new to that work. I, I do think you um, did a very good job of passionately speaking about what the, the goals of the district are on behalf of the school committee. And so I think your, your role in that, I think, has brought us to a place where Michael and I, as recent as today, we're again talking about um, anticipating that you're going to vote favorably on the on the presentation tonight, that it's a it's a budget that is giving us the most um, most satisfaction, I think, or the, or the least amount of anxiety going into the fiscal year than we've had, and and I can say that both as a as a principal and a superintendent <coughs> in the district, as a principal, you're you're intimately involved with the budget development, and it it has been it has been trying at times over the years, 16 years that I've been here, but certainly as a superintendent, the last four. Um, it it um, it really I think is is representative of I think the collaboration that's gone on internally in the school department and with the municipal side of government. So I think everybody's efforts are are really to be commended. So so thank you for allowing me. And to and I remember being in school <coughs> council meetings, especially at the at the grade school uh, uh, at the bachelor school, where in October November we'd be seeing some of those budget discussions yes. they would be sharing it with the school council it is an amazing amount mm -hmm. of work and how early it starts mm. you're like barely getting started <laughs> getting settled in on the new year and oh. you're starting on the next year it's so. true you know the budget gets voted in june it's like the summer and then in the early fall we're talking about yeah, the next fiscal year you know it does it's just a, it's, it's like the basketball season it's like so. the nba <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> exactly months, right that's it. <laughs> so and thank you michael for a nice presentation again tonight yes. so the i mean i think the comments i would add i mean thank you and you know, and thank Mr. Bernard. I would add as a, you know, the leader of doing the budget. Really, I mean, I think you are as knowledgeable about anybody, um, and you were very a very big part of the finance planning team. Um, just a few comments, just to say, just to say publicly. I mean, I think the fact that we've gotten extraordinary relief the last two years is is incredible because it, that just means our expenses have gone up so much. But the fact that we've been able to, to manage that just speaks to how well we've maintained the budgets over the last couple of years. Yep. I also know that even though they are increasing, we fought for a couple of years to get that team chairperson at the elementary level. And, and in fact, the number of out, you know, out of district placements is going down. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to manage those costs. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think I'm very nervous about what you know, special education could be in the future, but I think we've tried to address that the last couple of years. Um, and, and beyond just this board, I mean, the, we do what we can with the revenue, but the fact is, one of the reasons this, we're able to, you know, balance the budget this year is also the fact that, you know, and on the town level, they've been able to help, you know, control health care costs with the PFA that they've put in place. So the health care increase is only 4.5% in this budget, which is lower than a lot in the state. And the new growth, you know, from the Polte project, I mean, the new growth r number is almost $1 million for next year, which is really incredible. And you know, so I think it's just worth noting that as well because I think on the town side they've done a very good job to try to work on getting revenues up and you know and, and controlling some of the expenses that we have to deal with so thank you, thank you everyone thank you so uh, there is a motion that was reflected in the slide and since I can see this one <laughs> yeah. I will move yes, that the, thank you, that the uh, school committee approve and hereby adopt the final fiscal year 20 school operating budget of 31 million seven hundred and fifty seven thousand and seven hundred and seventy three dollars this represents an increase of three point three percent or one million eleven thousand seven hundred and twenty six dollars over fiscal year 19 okay. all right any other questions comments or concerns Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you again, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, do I make the motion to go into hearing? You need a motion to go into uh, the public Here. hearing, yes, on the I can't. You cannot. Okay. Well, I move that we go into a public hearing. For, for school choice. For the per, uh, for discussing school choice. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. All right. So under the Education Reform Act of 1993, 
um, we annually hold a public hearing to decide if we want to engage with the school choice. Um, becoming a choice district means that North Reading will accept students from other cities and towns for enrollment in, it, in our schools. Once a student is accepted as a choice student, he or she is a student until the graduation or the student opts, out, um, opts to withdraw. The district will receive $5,000 from the sending district's Chapter 70 um, as a fund to, for each of the students. I believe our past practice is that we opt not to join the school choice. Is there any questions or comments? Do you guys want to buck the system and go for school choice? <laughs> <laughs> No, I remember um, actually sitting in the this discussion last year, not being yet on the committee, and wow. hearing some of Mel's comments too on sort of the history. So, um, yeah, no, I, I'm supportive of keeping it going the way we have. Yeah. I agree. Okay. Yeah. Um, after the hearing. All right, so then we can close the hearing would, and you would, then... You would entertain a motion to close the okay. hearing, correct? Do I move that we close the uh, public hearing on school choice? Mm -hmm. Second. Perfect. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, so um, we now need to make a motion to not, tar to not participate yeah. in school choice. If so, someone would like to make that yeah. motion. I move that the district of North Reading mm -hmm. will not participate in the school choice program. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sorry, is there a... There was a little... In the, uh, Where second, is it? The end of the second paragraph on item four. Not, not to not participate, participate, excuse me. School choice, because of program. Because of the program is as it is presently constructed ensures that the needs of some of the children of the Commonwealth cannot be met. Thank you. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you guys. We we'll went through this together. Okay. Take it away, Mr. McGowan. <coughs> so you all have a copy of the, 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 the compiled evaluation that we put together. Um, I think like previous years, this has a three-year rolling history of, of the various rating categories. And uh, at the end of each section, all of our comments, uh, I listed them in different order each time. Uh, not that it matters, but I, and I, I don't know that they necessarily have to be uh, anonymous, but uh, uh, certainly as we talk about it, people's uh, opinions may come out. But, um, Overall, I thought this was a really good exercise for me. Uh, the first time I've been through it, I don't know, Diana, uh, Mrs. Bowell, how you thought of it, but uh, um, I think really um, uh, tying this back to the goals workshop we had last summer and thinking ahead to next year's goals workshop, um, I think this really brings everything into relief in terms of where we've done well, where we can uh, uh, make some improvements, and where we've both done well and can make improvements. So. Um, Happy to take guys any questions of what you've seen? Um, did any of them, it being your first time one doing it and, and compiling it, did anything jump out at you that was concerning that, like maybe because it didn't score very high or anything of that? Well, I, I would say the opposite, or at least I would, what I would say is we, I, I think if, in general, if we took a, a, a really literal look at the categories, you could actually, without, without saying anything bad about the performance, we, we might, in other words, we might be easy graders in some ways. Um, and that goes for myself as well. Um, it, it, my job, our performance evaluation, it's very clear that if you're meeting your expectations and not getting the highest grade, that's a really good thing because the expectations <coughs> are high. Um, so, I mean, you know, I, I think we're all kind of doing the same thing, so I think relatively we're seeing the same <coughs> results, but um, um, that's, that was the only thing I saw sort of across the board. Um, not, no, in no particular areas, but. 
I don't. Are we? Ex, are we? Are we really as exemplary as we think we are? I guess is the question. Of course we are, Rich. <laughs> Of course we are. <laughs> no, um, in the numerically past anyway. I think I think we have a pretty good idea. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I think we have a pretty good idea where we're at, uh, uh, in a narrative sense. But numerically, it might be. We can think a little more about those categories. But well, historically, things that like we highlight or look at um, is anything that would be like below a three. Mm -hmm. So, um, and this one comes up often, as you can tell, yep. the, the history that engages in professional development among the committee members. And there's been some debate that we do and we don't. Um, I don't think that we do in the, in the sit down and, you know, educate type thing, right. but in just discussions amongst one another, I think that <clears throat> we do professional development. Um, but other than that, I didn't really see anything else that jumped out at me as being. I, I think um, in the communication strategy um, under family and community relations is another area where I think we attempted to set that as a goal just in general uh, in the summer. Um, but I think we need to relook at that and um, focus on that in this upcoming summer's workshop. Um, so we get a little more clarity of thought of what we want to do. Because um, I think we're kind of, we've had some interesting experiences with social media this year, and, and uh, um, I think it's something we probably want to continue to, to sort of refine that goal and then start taking action. That's good. Do you guys have any uh, comments? I was just going to acknowledge I, the, the comments that dealt with your interactions with the administration and let you know that I appreciate the, the, the positive feedback that was provided through your evaluation on, on the work that, that we're doing as an administrative team, um, either in tandem with the school committee or just in our normal operations of which you are recognizing. So thank you for that. And I think you're doing a great job. <laughs> that question was asked a moment ago. I mean, I, if I may, I mean, I think I mean, a few comments. I, I mean, I think, I think a lot of the credit of what we do is directly because of Mr. Bernard, just to say. I mean, I think you are very good at keeping us on task. And, <laughs> no, really, I mean, you, you do. I mean, you, you keep us on task. And so a lot, of, a lot of things are met because of the leadership that you, that you have. I mean, you put the packets together. You get us the materials that we need to make informed decisions. So I appreciate that. I think, you know, I think despite, you know, Mr. Webster and Mr. Venezia's, you know, um, prediction of gloom with all new members you know joining I think we've <laughs> put the time in to try to learn um, I think we you know we have done that I, I think that now that we are a new newer committee I think the summer should be an opportunity for us to really talk about where we want to go and I think professional development has been something that we haven't done I actually wanted to do it a little bit this year and personally was disappointed in myself for not being able to make it on to a couple of the meetings I know that Mr. McGowan has made it to a few of them which I think is great. Um, the community relations is going to be hard. I mean, I don't know what the answer is because, you know, few, if any, come out to the public hearings. And so trying to determine that. But again, I, mean, I think we've put the work in here and there. I, I, I agree. I mean, I think, again, the scale is hard because if, if, if you've been rating a certain way before and then, yeah, no, you, you know, it's, it, it is what it is. But a lot of them are very specific. And, yeah. and again, I think and a, a lot, lot of them are, I think a, little, a lot of them are legitimately yeah. the highest rating I you know I, yeah but I also give a lot of credit to the to the to the people that we work with because yeah, no school committees look good when the schools are good schools yeah. I mean when the administrators are doing <laughs> their job well and yeah. you know the finance people are doing a great job with the budget like I mean really a lot of our role is just to be the oversight here and you know help if things get out of you know out of hand and we've had really good members on the school committee in the past it's put us in a good position we have a great building we have you know, great administrators and teachers here and in many ways you know just like at work when you do well it's because the team under you does a great job and mm -hmm. school committee looks great because we have a great district that we're working in yeah well said so. yes I agree. very well uh, said thank you I agree. I agree i think one of the things we can talk about in the summer about uh, when it comes to professional development too is maybe we define that a little bit more because it's not the same as professional de development for the professional staff right it's 
it's it, we don't most of us don't have the capacity to take a lot of time to do classes or seminars yeah. go to the go to the annual conference of the of the for the committee uh, for the school committees um, that's a that takes a lot of time and 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 it already takes a lot of time just going to all of our, our subcommittee meetings but we, maybe if we define it a little bit more about the kinds of things we can do um, that would make it easier for us to, to, to do things that are meaningful yeah, and I think I think also just reporting back so <clears throat> if one person goes that they you know give a presentation yeah. to everybody else and I think we can yeah. you know, really look at the subcommittees and make sure that the ones that we're doing are the ones that are most useful yep. I mean I, I I was happy that we added the you know the special education you know parent advisory council liaison this year but then you know again really looking and seeing what what committees we need and you know and, and the other thing is the reality is we have a lot of really good people that that have a varied you know and different knowledge on this committee and so really trying to focus on you know what does each of us do well and try to you know take different leadership and and I do think that even though like you guys are both the first year and I mean, Rich has stepped up to work on the school start time, which frankly will be one of the bigger issues in the next couple of years. You know, and Diana has done a lot with the CIPC and with yep. the town, you know, the, more of the town management. Again, as a first year member, to really be leading two of the more important in athletics is one of the bigger committees too. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's great. I mean, it's great that different people have different interests and we're all trying to kick in and, you know, do our job, so. Hmm. Okay. I don't think professional development is a matter of us not wanting to do it. Yeah. It's a matter of be, finding the time to be able to do it. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that I'm sure all of us would want to go to. Yeah. It's just making that feasible. Well, in the past, everybody hasn't wanted to go, but this, I think this committee does. And so. Yeah, no, I, I think no, I can, I can, and I, yeah. and I get that. But yeah, yeah, I think, you know, and and I'll give the MASC credit. Some of the things they do are easy to go to. Yeah. You know, they take a drive out to Marlboro and spend a night, an evening, and or a, or, or a Saturday morning. But that that all supposes that you have the time. And yeah, kids aren't in 500 different activities and all those yeah. things. So. I'm in that second bucket. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Madam Chairman, to the point about it's been referenced to BOCO, so I, I will, the next meeting, I actually worked on it today. Um, at your next meeting, I'm going to be proposing a summer meeting schedule for you. So if you're wondering, I figured I would wait until the new member sure. is at the meeting to make sure that it can work new with that person too. New member, new member. Oh yeah, well, the only other comment so I will see in, on in here on, on page two, I just thought it was interesting with, uh, especially with two new select board members coming on board. Is that for next year or for this year? No, I was, uh, <laughs> that was actually my comment. I was just saying, we, we you guys, yeah. and, I'll, and I'll second Mr. Bernard's comments, you guys did a great job on the finance planning team and uh, working with the finance committee. And so, and I think we have some good relationships and I think we're gonna have to keep that up because we've got some new people coming on on the, community, on the town side as well, yep. as well as a new member here. Um, and so that's just work that's ongoing and, and, and really never ends, uh, that, that kind of relationship building. Now you're predicting the, uh, the results of the town election. Well, I can predict that there will be two new select board members, can't I? <laughs> Aren't there two people not running? I, I think. Uh, yes. Yeah, Mike and Bob. So. Um, so it's an easy prediction. Yeah. Well, I was reading it as our committee. No, no, this, uh, that'd be. The, no, I know what you meant. Yeah. I, put a note I, I, I read it yeah. a second time, and I took. I oh like, yeah, oh, that's right. right. <laughs> yeah, I just put a note. I was yeah. like, that. should have just said the town, <laughs> the yeah. municipal side. The municipal okay. side. All right. Um, <clears throat> no. Yeah, we're on to the minutes. Um, I will entertain a motion to accept the open minute sessions of March 18, 2019. I move to accept the open minute session, uh, minutes from the open session of March 18th, 2019. Second. Okay. I don't see any changes, so all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Just the one, so that's awesome. Okay. Yes, just one tonight. And then on to the budget update. Mr. Conley. Thank you. So in the packet this evening was a fiscal 19 uh, budget update, which reflects financial activity through about the middle of April. Um, and not, not a lot of new information from the previous report. Um, 
certainly, as you can see by looking through the numbers, it's, again, it's broken down through salaries and expenses as we typically, typically do. Um, you know, many line items like teacher salaries, you know, special education, out of district costs, you know, building maintenance, contractual, you know, service line items, you know, they remain relatively tight, but we're still within budgeted amounts. And we're certainly going to continue to, to monitor these areas over the, the, the final two months of the fiscal year. Um, we typically encumber all utility expenses, and then we continue to monitor the, you know, the monthly usage and invoices on a, on a monthly basis. Excuse me, Michael. Can you explain yeah. what, what, you, what you mean by encumber? Yeah, so when we encumber, I mean we, we uh, essentially plan to, we, we, um, you assume it's going to be spent? We assume it's going to be spent. Commit to it. We commit, yeah, we commit. That's the, where I'm looking for. All the, the, the funding that's budgeted in that line item. Right. Um, so we, we make the assumption that what we have budgeted for utilities, and when I say utilities, I mean mainly electricity line items at each yep. school, yep. the gas and the heating line items at each school, as well as the water. We get, we get billed for water at each school will be spent entirely. And then and the invoices come in and we, and we monitor the usage and the cost against the budget. So it, it really, at this point, when we look at it, um, you know, we, I do anticipate that we'll be spending the majority of our gas budget this year. Um, but I do feel we'll have a small amount of funds available in the electricity and water budget um, to, to repurpose. Um, so what we typically do is this month in May is we start making adjustments to those commitments and those encumbrances. And if there's going to be some available you know, funding, we'll adjust those, those um, you know, PO balances down to what we think the actual will be. That, that typically happens in, the, in what we'll be doing over the next you know, few, few weeks, really, as we prepare to close the year. So. When you look at the utility line, you might see like there's not a lot of you know funding there because we've committed our, as I said, encumbered um, you know, the full budget for the majority of those lines. But I think we're in good shape. You know, I think we'll, we're not in danger of exceeding the budget. You know, the, the gas is probably the most the most tight. Um, electricity and, and water and, and telephone and other utilities will have some available money uh, funds to, to repurpose elsewhere. Um, the food service program. Uh, we talk about the food service program each each month. I'm happy to report they had a very good month of March, which we were hoping for. That's typically a good month for the food service program. It's you know it's 21, 22 operating days in the month of March, and we ended the month the month with a net gain of over nine thousand dollars. So that with um, with the March numbers, it puts us in line to achieve a break-even program um, should we meet our revenue and expense projections over the last quarter of the fiscal year, April, May, and June. So April is always a little bit more challenging. May we expect kind of a big return, and then June um, can be a little bit more challenging as well, but we should be, we think we'll be able to be okay to, this year. Um, on the payroll side, really nothing significant to report. You know, the payroll projections are really all, line items are trending very close to the budgeted amounts. Um, and, you know, there's nothing to really uh, you know cause for concern and when I look at the the projections um, so I think really at this point as we really approach the final two months of the fiscal year you know, it's, it's amazing that we're, we're almost into May quite honestly I think we're in solid position to close the fiscal year and I do think um, right now with you can look at the available you know budget total projection and um, that we are in good position to achieve those carryover um, amounts that we essentially forecasted the FY20 budget around, and that would be meeting $100,000 of prepayments, being able to pay a little bit of, of uh, the year-end invoices for transportation from the general fund as opposed to the revolving account to meet the FY20 transportation revolving account offset. So I think we'll be able to do that. Um, and I think we're in, we're in good standing to close the fiscal year. So we'll open it up to any, any questions. I have one very minor question, but I keep forgetting to ask Mr. Bernard this. With there's money left over for crossing guards, I know that like at the little school we've had a hard time this year finding crossing guards. I don't know that, that we've had them in every position that we normally have them. Um, I mean, I just want to make sure that we are you know getting crossing guards where we need them. I don't know. It's a we are, and I will say the the crossing guard is that we that we support. We support typically we one pay crossing for guard. One. Um, it's kind of one. a fixed amount, um, so I think we certainly have have that. I think there's actually more more to that 
to that line item um, than just the crossing guard. So I'll, I'll look at that, but we, we certainly, we're, we're paying for that crossing guard, which right. is, the cost is actually about $6,000 for that crossing guard that we, we get charged back for by the town. Okay. I know I know we had trouble, you know, again, with unemployment being low, that we were talking about substitutes, and I don't know if the, you know, if it was hard finding crossing guards as well, just to make sure that they're, you know, in yeah, place yeah, where yeah, we have them. Yeah, okay. we haven't experienced that. Yeah, right. yeah, it's, that's been okay. My only minor point. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, staffing, Mr. Bernard. Is there Madam Chairman, I thought I was going to have an update for a report for you tonight, but it, it was negated today, so I, I, I have nothing. What? I have nothing to share. No update tonight. Um, and something that Mr. Conley had said earlier, you know in advance of retirees, right? But that doesn't happen until when do they? So when do they know? That um, we asked the staff to notify um, our office by February 1st in the in the year in which they will retire. Okay. Which is a newer practice, yep. maybe three years now. Yes. We used to be three, maybe yeah, four. Last contract. Used, it used yeah. to be that there was a year a, a year in advance, and that just seemed. It, it didn't. A lot. It, it, yeah, it was right. right. People would often make the plan, and then it would change, and it just seemed like it was an exercise. It didn't any longer need to be undertaken so now they notify me by by february 1st in the year in which they retire so we have that some, are you suggesting sometimes retirement ch announcements change mm. <laughs> i am <laughs> sometimes <laughs> sometimes they do i don't have that deadline in my contract <laughs> um so we have and people i have to say that the staff are very good about that and people sometimes, you know, people do deliberate with that. You know, you can imagine it's a significant decision. And so I, I have conversations with people, and they ask me, and, you know, I say, yeah, no, but they just, you know, I give them the rationale of why it's important for us to know by that deadline because it, it has implications to the building of the budget, as you see. So yeah. that attrition that Michael factors into his projection for next year um, is based largely on, on th those notifications. Um, so... Okay. <clears throat> All right, Mr. McGowan, bids and donations, please. Yes, indeed. Madam Chair, I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $150 from Descoli's Pizza for the North Reading High School track team. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Aye. <laughs> I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a total donation of $765 from various donors from friends and family of James J. Chambers for a scholarship to be given to a graduating senior to be chosen by the administration in memory of James J. Chamber Chambers, husband of high school guidance secretary and Chambers. And if the committee would uh, allow it, I will read the names on the list. Catherine Houston, North Reading High School Sunshine, Inez Murphy, Ruth Begley, Tom and Holly McHugh, Claudia Brown, Becky Brown, John and Ann Kenny, Ann Lundell, Frank Carey, Carolyn Lucci, Robert Ward, Sarah Tully, Richard Markins Trust. Very nice. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $988 from the North Reading Music Boosters to support costs associated with the Music in the Park field trip. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude in-kind donations for the above list of school activities and expenses from December 2018 through March 2019 from the North Reading Middle School Parents Association, totaling $2,395.85. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude in-kind donations for the above list of school activities and expenses from December 2018 through March 2019 from the North Reading High School Parents Association, totaling $2,965. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Let me get the big guns. 
I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude in-kind donations for the above list of school activities and expenses from November 2018 through March 2019 from the J.T. Hood Elementary School Parents Association, totaling $10,323.96. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude in-kind donations for the above list of school activities and expenses from December 2018 through March 2019 from the E.E. E. Little Elementary School Parents Association, totaling $12,787.93. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. They never cease, do they? I never do. It really is. All right, subcommittee updates. Um, Ms. Butwell, would you like to let us know what happened at the athletic subcommittee? Sure. Um, so we met on April 9th. Um, we talked, I mean, I'd say that the heavy part of the conversation was we had um, the North Reading youth softball right. folks in, um, and they talked about potentially wanting to put in dugouts at the little school. Um, they had some corporate sponsors um, that had already, you know, had a dialogue with and were willing to step up for, to fund these. Um, but as you know, that's, you know, something where we have to look at our policies and discuss what's appropriate and make some decisions. Um, what concluded from that discussion was for, um, for the league to put together a proposal and we outlined some details that we would, you know, like to see in that proposal for it to be all encompassing um, and then come back to the mm -hmm. committee so that we could discuss that further. Um, so obviously not close to making any type of decision or anything of that imagination. It was the in initial discussion and if I'm not mistaken, I think it was to come back roughly around the June or May or June time frame right. that proposal. That's right. They were going to put something together to share. Um, right. I, to date, I have not received anything further, but I anticipate that they, that they will. So is this for the l little school complex, yes. not the high school? Not Correct. the high school, no. no. Yeah. Um, Although there was a tangential discussion around um, their involvement with helping to um, uh, fund the dugout covers yeah. at the high school complex that we've talked about. Why? Why? At the little school complex. It's the youth softball organization oh, that's making okay, the proposal. Gotcha. So it's for the fields that they yeah, use largely. Okay. okay. I don't think they were even aware of what we were trying to do for the high school. I would agree with you. I yeah, don't think, I don't think they were aware. We mentioned it. Right. And they, yeah. they were actually inquisitive about mm. that, thinking that, and I don't want to put words in anyone's mouth, but maybe there could be some other sponsorship for that type yes. of work downstream. And, you know, I think it was just the consensus to take one step at a time and let's talk about this proposal and then see where we go from there um, so that was probably the the biggest um, discussion that we had um, the second was the issues with the baseball field um, the contractor I think it the contractor that took on this job um, I'll leave it at that uh, it was just a poor job overall from my understanding there were some issues with cutting the sod before it was laid down. Um, the time in which it was laid down was not um, the best time to do that. It was approaching winter, if I'm not mistaken. It was, yeah, it was really um, It December. didn't take very well. The At the time, and there probably is an update, but at that time of the meeting, um, the field was almost dangerous to play on. So I'm assuming there's an update, and I've I seen do. some kids out there. <laughs> yeah, so I do, I do. I'm hoping they're playing. It's much We're using the field. Shape. Yeah. We, so, so I do have a little bit of an update okay. on that. So that was, as you said, we met on April 9th. Yeah. And it was that um, following Friday when so a little bit of energy was put into it in the midweek. But on that Friday, um, some of us went down to the field. Matt looked at you know kind of looked firsthand at what you know we had talked about in that meeting on the night and saw you know what 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 the problems were um there were some ruts there was some you know edging along baselines that you know wasn't what it should be um the long and short of it is over the course of that weekend and then into what then became the school vacation week and it just so happened that the schedule it was such that there wasn't a first game scheduled to be played on that field until i think it was april 20 
27th, I think it was the Tuesday we came back, or some, somewhere thereabouts, whatever that day, 23rd, I think it was the 23rd, which was the Tuesday we came back from school vacation week. Mm -hmm. The school vacation week, there was a crew down there of about three people from the contractor who, and I should add, this was a project funded by the Diamond Club. It was a, it was a donation funded project, a lot of goodwill. The contractor, I think, was associated with the Diamond Club, you know, through relationships, not as not as a member, but he was trying, I think, to work with them to to do the, the Blue Work at a reduced cost. So in some ways we were a little bit, I think, deferential to that um, for all of the right reasons. To his credit, they came back on uh, school vacation week, the April school vacation week, supplemented with some of our own grounds crew, the two grounds crew that the school department employs that normally do work to prep all of our fields for for their respective seasons, got the field in, in, in very good shape. And, and I have to say, it was really, it really, it came a long way in a short period of time. And just, it's been a terrible spring. I mean, it's been cool, it's it been, been wet, and you know, it's just, that wasn't contributing well to um, to the work to be done to, to make the field, you know, in a condition that I think we felt we could play on it. But that's all gone away, and we're using that's the great. field now. So yeah, I think it'll be fine for the season. It, it's, it's absolutely fine. Um, like I said, a lot of, there was a lot of improvement in a short period of time. I do think, though, at the end of the season, there's kind of a universal opinion that we need to we need to look at and see what does need to be done. Does the sod have to be rolled back? Better grading, that kind of thing. But right now, it's 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 okay. So a lot did happen, you know, in those two weeks following the, the meeting. I think it was a perfect storm of things. It was not necessarily just the, you know, that. This is all on the contractor by any no. stretch. It was, um, you know, across the board, just multiple factors that came into play. Yeah, that's a good but, way to say it. It was a yeah. perfect storm. Well, I remember when you were, uh, we, we, you were just, we were discussing at the time that was going down that we, we were, if I remember correctly, it was a, a little bit of, uh, we're going to put it down and see what the weather does. And uh, wasn't there at yeah, the time? Yeah, what, what happened was, so the window for the growing season was kind of closing. Yeah. And as we were debating whether or not to leave it alone and just go with it next spring, meaning now, yeah. or not, the contractor, again, trying to, you know, he's doing this, you know, probably Absolutely. on off hours, you know, he's trying to minimize the cost and all. People, the, a, a, a person or people from his crew cut the, he cut the existing sod yeah, yeah, to, right. with the intention of removing it. Yeah. Well, once that happened, it was like, well, if we know that's not going to be any good for the spring. Right. Let's try the, right. the, new, the new project. And so that's what happened. And it just, you know, it just, it, the, the spring didn't, didn't cooperate. I think they were up against the clock to get, get it done. And then the spring didn't cooperate with the growing season. Sure. So, yep. um, but you're right. Those two things I think were really the bulk of the discussion. We talked a little bit about the cooperative ice hockey team. Mm -hmm. um, I think there'll be an update for you, girl, the cooperative girls ice hockey team. Okay. Um, Michael and I have had mm -hmm. meetings with the athletic director and the high school principal as recent as last week. Yep. I, think we're, I think it was like the Monday we came back from vacation, maybe yes. the 22nd of April. Um, but I think, you know, we, we, you're probably aware that that program enjoyed some good success this year. Um, we're looking to capitalize on that, and I think you know probably we're. I think it's very likely we're going to be recommending it status quo, and th there's a there's a re-upping of the co-op that needs to take place with Peabody as the lead community on that. So that I think that's going to be our, our recommendation. With the discount rate. Yeah. <laughs> that would be nice. Okay, finance planning team, Mr. Buckley. Uh, well. I think people have seen most of the work tonight. Um, we worked a lot on the revenue numbers. I, again, I'll thank the people on there. We, I think we were very accommodating, understanding that the municip municipal side had some challenges this year. But I think they, uh, the team overall was really great at trying to figure out the revenues and figuring out what we can do, what we can't do. I know the town administrator had some tough cuts to make this year still um, in order to mm -hmm. get us to a balanced budget. So I think we were able to do that. Uh, I think Mr. Connolly or Mr. Bernard mentioned the um, <clears throat> that we were able to uh, at the town meeting we're going to have a Warren article for that we'll be co-sponsoring. So we should probably be prepared on a couple of Warren articles to um, speak potentially on these. But um, mm -hmm. about you know an anticipating that <clears throat> just like the last couple of years, special education costs have risen more than anticipated <clears throat> with some new developments that may be going in. I think we're all anticipating that that could be a challenge in the coming years. Again, so we're trying to build a reserve fund now so that we have some money in there if there are additional costs. And at the last one, we talked about, you know, overall the town, the town warrant 
and the articles that are going to be coming up, and a few of them will require our votes, and a few of them may require our, our comment if there are questions about it. That's the main things we spoke about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, a, that's about right. Yeah. Nor Cam, were you able to make it there, Mr. Buckley? So Nor Cam was on the same night as a Special Education Parent Advisory Council speaker, and I told Nor Cam that I was going to go to the speaker instead, so I went to the CPAC speaker about uh, discipline um, for special education students, which I found very interesting, actually, just to learn, because I don't really know much about that, and so, you know, I, never I, went, I, I hope I never do, <laughs> so. Um, Could I add something regarding NORCAM, Madam Chairman? I, I told Mr. Yes. Buckley this, that um, NORCAM, the NORCAM Board of Directors contacted me, and I met with a gentleman um, who's on the board, Ed Strobe, uh, some of you may know him from, from town. Um, I knew him from years ago when his son came through the high school when I was principal. He, he reached out to me and arranged for a meeting. I met with him somewhere on or around, I think it was like April 11th, which was just before the April vacation, April school vacation week. Um, so I guess as, as the town looks to, um, I'm going, I hope I'm saying this correctly, but issue requests for proposals, or I guess there's a contract upping, uh, re-upping due with, with NORCAM and such. I think I think the board has been tasked with meeting with various department heads in the town about their work with NORCAM, and so he wanted he wanted some time on my calendar to um, to sit with me and just hear from from my perspective as the superintendent. You know, wh where did I think um, there were things to capitalize on? Where might there be areas of improvement? Um, so we had a very good meeting for maybe 45 minutes or so, and I gave him some some feedback on where I thought. Uh, things were going well, which I thought they were, but I also gave him some suggestions on it. And it wasn't, it wasn't criticism necessarily, just where might we be able to enhance things and what, what might NORCAM's role be in the future with um, supporting the school district at, at all levels. And so I just think, I think you should be aware that I had that meeting and it was, I thought I gave them, I give them credit for Reaching. taking that on and, and uh, you know, I, there was no, it was not, you know, it was very much conversational. It wasn't, you know, they, no one was in a hurry. It was good. It was nice to have that, that opportunity. So I just wanted to share that with you. All right. Thank you. The upcoming subcommittee schedule are as follows. The policy subcommittee will meet May 2nd at 4 p.m. in the superintendent's conference room. The athletic subcommittee will meet May 14 at 1230 in the superintendent's room. The substance abuse coalition will meet May 21st at 10 a.m. in the police station. The NORCAM Board of Directors will meet May 23rd at 7 p.m. at the NORCAM office. And the financial planning team is to be announced or determined later. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Everyone wants a break? <laughs> well, I think I think it was just we, need, we have to have reorganization before then. Right. Yeah. Because the chairman of the select board won't be there and for sure. Then you gotta sure. figure out people's schedules. Yes. So. Madam Chairman, there's, you'll notice there's the absence of a scheduled CIPC meeting. That's that's by design. But I do think, for the benefit of all of you, um, the last CIPC meeting went very well in terms of the um, board coming to a decision that they would recommend that the funding for the advancement of the one-to-one -one program um, be part of the recommended projects for fiscal year 20. So. Um, they were, you know, I would say in, in totality, the CIPC, you know, largely looked upon that request very favorably, but Mr. Connolly, Mrs. Bowell, and Mr. Prisco were extremely instrumental, I think, in, in steering that conversation to a favorable outcome. Um, but I don't want to minimize the role that other people in the room had, you know, those members that are on the CIPC that also voted to, to move that project forward to um, the town meeting to the board to the select board first which they accepted last Monday night at their meeting and now it will be part of the plan for um, for the school department along with the re replacement vehicle mm -hmm. and the fire that that, that kind of for lack of a better term the kind of famous fire alarm safety mm -hmm. alarm panel that we've been talking about so um, that was a that was a significant uh, achievement to get make sure that that one-to-one -one program was included again so I also I also, um, you know, want to acknowledge Representative Jones' efforts to supplement that program advancing through his efforts at the state level, and that, it, you know, we're, we're we're very hopeful that that might repeat itself as well. So. I was just going to say, is yeah. that going to be a 
an occurrence? I think it's, um, I, yes, I, 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 can't, I can't look you in the eye and tell you with certainty, but I think, I think the, um, the likelihood of that happening again is, is at least high right now. And is that, once again, if you can refresh my memory, is that from the sit-down that you and Mel, Mel had with him? I think it's fair to say that it is. Yeah, I think initially the conversation, you know, when he, we, he, he talked about just how community projects could be funded, that that initially stemmed as one of the two projects, and now it's a repeat for, for fiscal year 20. Um, speaking of that relationship with uh, Representative Jones, uh, I think that's another area where we're going to have to, as a committee, uh, make sure that we maintain those that good relationship as uh, now with Mel uh, leaving the committee and uh, Mr. Bernard retiring. Um, those are the two connections, the two, you know, direct connections to, to Representative Jones. So, again, yeah. something we'll have to sort of take up that mantle and <clears throat> make sure that... Representative Tarr, because he has a personal connection to my family, um, set me up with a meeting and I did meet with him as well. Um, Brad Jones and so I, I do hope to continue to do that um, so we did that's have good with him yeah, that's year. good, good. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have to say from where I sit um, they could not be any more responsive they, they have been excellent yeah. and, and, and it's not always it's they're also very proactive in their communication I get a lot of communication from both of their offices um, either from them or from their aides um, they're very good about that I have to say they, yeah. they've, they've They've never once, you know, made me feel as though I was being marginalized or placated. It's, uh, you know, they've, they've both met with me in my office on occasions when I've asked. They've sometimes asked for those meetings um, on issues that they were, you know, interested in learning more about. And um, I have to say, so I, I think you're right, because they, they play a, a critical role, you know, yep. in, and they can be very helpful. And, some, and I think they've been helpful to me in you know, sharing things with me that I never knew they could be as helpful as they have been. You know, this is yeah. a case, this one-to-one -one initiative, and, and Bruce Tyre is the same way. I had the same thing with questions on the foundation budget formula mm -hmm. when they're talking about changes, and we talked about that when we sat down, and he said you, he gave me a different perspective than yeah. what I had read, and actually even after that, subsequently, he had mailed me information yeah. that was Good. really helpful for That's me great. to read through. Good. So Good. Yeah. the fact that they engage with us mm -hmm. in that way and are helpful, I mean, I appreciated that. Yeah. A ton, so. No, and also, I mean, to, to tag on to like the professional development. I mean, that's another area where we can improve. I mean, having learning learning more about foundation budget and how things work. I mean, I know that the town administrator is getting a a, a position which will help with writing grants. I think we've been very fortunate to have people that are very good about finding money. You know, like Michael in particular about finding grant. You know, potential opportunities that are out there. But I think it's important for us also to you know, learn that a little bit more. I don't really know much about that and make sure that we can all, you know, see what we can do to try to find funding in new and creative ways as, as budgets get tighter over the years. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. So. All right. Um, the administrative <coughs> report. So, Madam Chairman, I did provide you with um, something as part of my, and, and also in your packet, I just, I inserted you all, you should have a flyer that was sent to me by the town administrator regarding, um, the, um, I don't know if retirement's the right word, but the <laughs> departure, voluntary departure of Mike Prisco and, and Bob Masseri as members of the select board next uh, Monday night at the town hall. So that's for informational purposes for you. I also shared that with um, recently, um, was it recently departed. Departed. <laughs> I I Try to think of a better word. School yeah. committee members that used to be on the school committee. Yeah. I don't know okay. why. <laughs> Past school committee members. Mr. Bowers, there Mrs. Kopke, uh, Mr. Ba uh, Mr. Venezia, Mr. We call them emeritus? No. Uh, yeah, that's a better, yeah, I was trying to think of the right emeritus word. Emeritus members of the committee. <laughs> the other thing I, I have, well, the only other thing I have for you, and I, I supplied some documents. We had a very interesting day here today. Um, when I say here, at the middle high school campus. Um, we have, so you, some of you might recall that back about three years ago, we were one of the early districts that signed on to the Maple um, Initiative, which is the, a personalized learning initiative across the states. Where, if you, if you're, next time you're down my office, um, outside the conference room, there's a, a kind of a newly displayed. It's maybe been there a month or so, maybe two months tops. Framed um, acknowledgement of North Reading's participation as a catalyst district in, in Maple. We wanted the, we were one of the early districts that signed on, and essentially, I, I won't. 
bore you with too, too much information about what Maple is necessarily, but it, I just, it, it, one of its overarching initiatives is how our school districts working to personalize instruction with students, okay? And so for us, the one-to-one -one district, uh, the one-to-one -one initiative um, has been a significant way in which we're working to personalize learning. And so there's a consortium of, of school districts that are um, engaging in what are called these these learning tours, okay? And um, so we've, we've had people go from our district to other schools that are kind of at the same place where we are with the Maple Initiative, but today we hosted a day. And so what you have as, as an attachment to my report is kind of the schedule of, of the day and then the, um, the PowerPoint that, that guided um, the day. Those are the two documents that I, that I wanted to share with you. This, this work is, is largely the work of Dan Downs, our Director of Digital Learning, um, who the benefit of which we have, we have realized very quickly in the advancement of our digital learning work as a school district, he's done a very, very nice job um, for, for us with, with regard to digital learning and the whole digital learning model that we enjoy with our digital learning specialist. Patrick Daly as the Assistant Superintendent is very involved with Maple. Um, Mr. Lepret, the high school principal, and Dr. O'Connell, you'll see their names today, uh, excuse me, in the documents, they today had a lead role. And we had a number of teachers that volunteered to kind of host some, some visitations in their classrooms and, and conversations with students around what they were, what they were doing um, and how they were benefiting from personalized learning. And it was a, it was a really good day. Um, I think it's another example where, you know, we're kind of at the, I don't, want to say, I don't want to overstate it, but we, we, we're kind of at the forefront in this in this area. I don't want to again. I don't want to overstate it, but I think it's to to be um, in a position where others are, are looking to come to our schools and see what's going on in our classrooms is a nice thing to to to, to highlight. And I think you all should be aware that um, in the community as well that, that this is something that went on at our middle high school um, today. So it was informational only. I'm just looking at this itinerary and I find it to be the classic education, efficient, well-packed, <laughs> being move from here to here and here and, and, and get your work in uh, itinerary and it's impressive. There, there was not a lot of sitting around with your feet up today. No. <laughs> it was on the move. Yeah, it was on the move. So thank you for recognizing that. It was really, the feedback at the end of the day was really neat to hear about conversations with students. You know, one of the things when we went, we I. We started in this room in the morning, and I, I was. And, oh, and by the way, NORCAM was here, and they recorded um, right. much of the day. The much, much, a lot of time was spent in this room, but not a lot of it was. Most of it was spent out in the classroom, but that that will be broadcast. But you know, I I used the word. I wanted them to be sponges today. I wanted them to just take it all in. You know, see what you know, take what they were seeing that they liked in our schools, and bring it back to their districts. And and um, I wanted them com conversing with students. I want you know. I wanted them asking students, what are you learning? Or, you know, why is this important? What did you get today? And they, they, they really enjoyed they, they made a point to tell me at the end of the day that those conversations were really, were really interesting for them. So, 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 so the more observing classes or just asking yes. students in there? No, they actually went into the classes while, while those classes were going on. And the teachers were aware that they, we had pre -met, met with them previously yeah. as recent as last Monday to kind of make the final touches to the organization. But there, there are particular things, go and we tried to give a cross-section of disciplines too. You'll see that, you know, it wasn't, we tried to get world languages in, we tried to get um, st uh, STEM classes in, and then we tried to get English and social studies and math. So we, you know, we tried to get representation across a lot of academic disciplines so that they could actually see. They're, they're short snippets, they weren't in there for entire class yeah. periods, as you can see from the schedule. But I think they were in there enough that, um, that they were able to, you know, walk out of here at the end of the day and say it was valuable being here today. How many people attended? It was 18. 18. Yeah. And then we had, we opened it up and had a number of our staff that we said, if you have an unassigned, you have a preparation period this period and you want to go see what some of your colleagues are doing. And we did have people take us up on that, oh, which cool. was nice. Yeah. Because we don't, we don't get off get opportunities to do that ourselves, no, you know, internally. Yeah. So. And why no student photos on some of them, but not all of them? Because of what was going on in the class at that time. Yeah. I think there were three. Had no student photo. Yeah, few. Oh, yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. Right. Very cool. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. All right. Um, future <laughs> business on May thirteenth at six thirty um, at the little school. It will be um, our regular meeting on June third at six thirty. 
a regular meeting, but it's back here at the Distance Learning Lab on June 10th um, at the superintendent's conference room at 630, and then we'll go to town meeting um, at 7 at the Performing Arts Center and June 17th at 630, a regular meeting here at the Distance Learning Lab. And with that... Are we, are we going to have a discussion at all? Oh, yes. I forgot all about that because we yes. have gone on and on. <laughs> Um, uh, we had reached out to Glenn Kucher of the Mass Association of School Committee and Executive Director. Yeah. Yes, the de Deputy Director? Executive Director. Executive Director. And he came out um, to um, what kind of walk us through what we need to do in order to um, do a superintendent search. So. It's my understanding that there's kind of like three different ways. One is as the school committee members, um, we have the ability to simply appoint someone. I could say, I want you to be the superintendent. You got the qualifications, great. Okay, here's the job. Another one is to do an internal search. And if as a board, we find that um, that there's an internal candidate that we like we can discuss amongst ourselves and, and um, hire him or her or we can um, do an a internal and external search and with those searches we do have the ability to um, have a search committee so um, is, is that how you all understood what was yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think you, you could have a search committee for an internal search as well if you wanted to yes, uh, right. but yes. It, yeah yeah and then and, and I thought I thought mr. Kucha was great about tr talking a little bit about what would make a job attractive to certain people and you know what would you know what in this district in particular would attract some people what would be you know some concerns about either Massachusetts or North Reading it was just interesting yeah, I to didn't hear. realize Massachusetts had such a bad <laughs> a lot of regu a lot of regulation. Yes. Right. Well, we do. We know that, but I just didn't realize it was so widely known. Or that it was unique. I, the, yeah. That mm -hmm. so many states don't have those kinds of regulations mm -hmm. in education. But yeah, it can surprise me a little bit. Well, we must still be doing something right because we got one of the best yeah, educations in the in, in the um, nation. Talking about what we want to do or. I think it would be good to know where you guys stand. I mean, are you looking that you are feel comfortable and versed in enough in the school committee ways to say, okay, I, I really like this person, let's just hire him? Is that something that you guys feel, or her? I keep pointing to, <laughs> to, to Cindy. You're hired. You got the job. I never, um, I never to answer that one specific question, I never think negatively upon when a leader has groomed someone for uh, as their to step into their role should they move on um, it happens in corporate America all the time um, it's a, something that I'm a huge advocate for in corporate America um, if and when it's appropriate I think that we could talk about that but um, I, I by no means am adverse to any of those options um, I'm a big proponent of hiring internally and always will be, but I don't feel convicted enough to say if everyone agreed to go and cast a wide net that I'd be the person to stand in the way of that. But um, those first two options tend to gravitate more towards me because I think a known entity is always a safer bet, especially if they're a highly qualified candidate and at the end of the day, most likely committee members are going to sway towards somebody internally um, and it would be a lot of due diligence that unless it was absolutely warranted um, you know maybe a lot of time invested for not only us but a committee that would be spending the time to do that so that's really how I feel about it and I would say also that uh, Mr. Kucher mentioned that if that it would be that if it if you do a search that includes external candidates they will know if there's a qualified uh, internal candidate, and that may restrict people. Right. Just 
keep people from wanting to to white uh, bother so to speak yeah. kind of a white bother situation and and you know we we think that and i would certainly make that choice with the full intention of fully considering everybody but that's from the outside that's not necessarily the way it might look and it may impact our our candidates so you know i'm not averse to taking a a, a good hard look at internal candidates uh first but uh you know i think we can continue to talk about it well i think it's a good problem if we have strong candidates mm -hmm. from within so yeah, yeah sure. so. mr buckley so i guess i i guess my thoughts are i mean i like i like the way Ms. Spoutwell said you know grooming is you know a way that it happens a lot of time i think one thing with mr bernard i think he's groomed many people through his deal through his oversight actually i think we have a few you know very qualified administrators in this in this district and I would personally be against the first option of just appointing somebody. I mean, I, I haven't been here that long. I don't know that I don't know the people well enough to say this one person is better than that one person. I would be between two and three. I'd be concerned about looking at internal and not having a hundred percent conviction and then trying to open it up that it seems disrespectful. I think we have at least one, if not two or three, very qualified internal candidates, and so. Again, what Mr. Kucher said about you know being a being a concern for people to apply if there if there are strong if there's a strong internal candidate was resonated with me as well. To be perfectly honest, um, I thought I, I do think we have some people here, but at the same time, I don't even know if we know what the interest level is. That's right. I mean, I, I wouldn't right. I wouldn't want there to just be one person that was interested and that we had no other opportunity. Um, I do think we should have a search committee and. Again, maybe, maybe, perhaps we even appoint a search committee and have a—I don't know—I don't, I don't know if it's common for a search committee to even have a conversation about, you know, internal candidates before the posting is done. It seems like we do have time to potentially even have that, you know, create a search committee and have a conversation. Um, it would be a good know. way to get uh, input from different sources uh, uh, to on that question. Yeah, um, I mean, because a, a search committee would have faculty members that have administrators on that search committee. And maybe even hear from them what their thoughts were about it, about you know the level of candidates we have internally already, um, parents that have had kids go through the school. So I mean, I think I think that would be maybe an interesting way to do it. I think we do. Mr. Bernard's been great in giving us a lot of um, time to do this the right way, you know, and 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 not in a rushed way. But I don't think we want to delay in doing that. So I think we probably want to create that that search committee quickly. And you know, maybe the first thing we could probably do that at the same time is continue to discuss about internal and external. The only other question I had is, I mean, do we even know what the interest would be about internal candidates? And I don't know if that's something that we, we should don't find know any, out. We certainly don't know any official way. We don't know any official way. And so, I don't know. I mean, that's something we can think about as well. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I would be in favor of at least having a search committee. I, I, I don't personally think there's one I, again, I think there's more than one person that is very good here, and so I would be interested in having a committee just to at least vet and start, you know, discussing it. Yeah. I don't know how other people feel. It feels like we should. <coughs> it feels like it, this is a topic for right after the committee is reorganized after the election that we where, where we make any the next take the next step of whatever it is um, does that does yes. no I know what you're trying to say um, especially given my, the fact that we have a little we have a window of time yeah um, if there if it's in agreement that we should um, do a, a search party um, I would like to put it out there now to get people who would be interested in serving on the committee um, get that in, get get those names in. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah um, sure. And regardless of who sits in these two chairs within the next week, at least you have started that process. Um, right. Yeah. And and so when the reorganization <laughs> comes along. Um, then that that you're just that much um, further along in the process yep. um, the other thing is if we are all in agreement that there should be a search committee and, and I am in favor of it regardless if we do internal only or internal and external 
Um, Mr. Kucher advised keeping it as small as possible, yeah. maybe nine to 11 people. Um, and I think nine if we could. I would love to keep it yeah. below nine if that was at all yeah. possible. Um, I believe there should be one or two school committee members that serve on it. Um, I believe Mr. Buckley had said a faculty member and uh, an administrative. Mr. Buckley, Mr. Kucher, right? Yes, through Mr. <laughs> Kucher. Um, uh, a parent representing the three different levels, elementary, middle, high, and it could be the same parent that has one in all three. Yeah. Um, maybe someone from like the special education um, uh, a, a parent a parent who's so whose child is right parents, yeah. um, and I forget what the other one was um, I think possibly a student possibly, possibly. a student which municipal. is kind of difficult if Fac yeah municipal. faculty administrator parent municipal official and he was just he suggested yes. yeah. he's destroying yeah. some ideas yeah. Though, yeah. yeah and we had talked about even past school committee <laughs> members as well might be interested uh, well they could serve as a parent too you know yeah parent or a you so member. a person can have can do double duty yeah. if you want a business owner <clears throat> and someone in the elementary room maybe you know yeah. you're a business owner and you have a um, a child in the elementary so if we can keep it to nine that would be wonderful so I guess this would be kind of the official asking for people who are interested in serving on a search think committee. There are seven other people that are watching right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it, possibly you look like you want to say something. So um, it, it, I think it might be might it be helpful to identify the constituencies that you want represented, and then talk about how to market that information. So right. For example, <clears throat> you decide you want just as an example, a school administrator and a teacher from the district. Okay. I can then communicate out. To, the, to those groups who probably won't see this, or oh, you know, that the school yeah. committee is, has formed a search committee of these constituencies to be represented. If you are interested in serving, send an email to, yeah, I could say you, or you know, by I such would and such. Say a, to me, and if I'm not here in the next week, then I can just forward all my emails to the next person in line, if yeah. that's okay with you guys. Yeah. I agree. That's fine. Okay. I agree. So, do we want to? enlist or state specifically faculty advisor can we go ahead <coughs> I probably would be I think we would yes. definitely want to I think I think for the yeah, community members the, that's what we'll get the to. employees <coughs> they may not necessarily be privy to that right. yeah so I think you know an email from me yeah yeah I asking and if we're asking for for parents then I can, an email I can, to I, the can district do, I can do that too yeah. right yeah. I can do, I, all of those I mean I can I can send I can do it all I can get the parents <coughs> I can get well, it is your fault. <laughs> <laughs> My email system allows me to do that. Yeah. Right. The only ones that it might, if you decide you want either a municipal official or a community member, somebody like that, you know, it, that's probably something better through, yeah. through the newspaper. Yeah. So I think we should do the newspaper in addition, yeah. regardless, because people don't read read the emails or right. or they just yeah. I yeah. think we should do that as well. They sh um, but and by the way, Jill communicated to me that she couldn't be here tonight, but that she would be. Doing the, her notes for the meeting through the Norcam. The question so is, if she I watched all the way through? Have that captured. Okay. So once you decide on what the makeup of the committee is, I think, and maybe a deadline for expressing interest, <coughs> then we can. I can move forward, and I can work with Eugenie if you want. On. Yes. Yeah. But I can. Mm -hmm. I could start to spread that word through my um, email system as soon as you want. I think we also have to define what the expectation is to express interest too. Well, so. I, yeah, I believe statement. it was, you know, just to draft a quick email or letter stating who you are and why you would want to be on yep. a search committee. I believe that's what Mr. Kusher, Kusher had you, mentioned. That's what you, we've done for other, I mean, that's what you did for the high school search Correct. committee that I was on. It was just, yeah, right. And, and let and, us know your interest. And I mean, what he had said was typically one person would chair the committee usually super, uh, super uh, sorry, a school committee member would chair the committee, the subcommittee, and often that person just appoints the, you know, just appoints the committee. And so, yeah. so I think if they reach out to Janine and Janine wants to take the on onus of that, you know, we'll have to figure out, let's, let's get the ap applications first, let's see how the election so goes. So we want um, 
uh, one school committee member or two? I, I'd be open to two, to be honest. I mean, well, can we start there and see? I mean, like, I mean, who has interest in doing that? Uh, yeah, I, I think have we interest? all should have interest, whether we... Well, uh, correct. Yeah. I mean, interest in actually doing and understanding what the time commitment would be. And again, that, that sort of falls to, I, I think we should try to get, I think we should try for two as well. And that can be part of the discussion in, in the reorg meeting. Okay. So two. A faculty. Uh, uh, someone from the administration. Just one, right? Yeah. Well, the other thing we can, if we, if for some reason we didn't get something else and we had two outstanding for administrators sure. or two for faculty, sure. yeah. so at least a, one faculty, at least one administrator. At least, yeah. When you say faculty, teacher. you want that to be a, a professional level versus a teacher? I think, I think so. We yes. should, I, I think we should th have that if we can, but also I don't want to close it off to other staff who, um, again, we, I mean, we want to hear from anyone who's interested in being on the committee, and then we can, I think, right? I mean, <coughs> who has a stake in it? Uh, whether we actually put them on the committee sort of depends on what the whole makeup looks like but yeah well and the time commitment so you could do one teacher and then one non-teacher staff yeah okay well, I think I would I would say it, if I would start with faculty I think I would like to see one one teacher and then if there was a faculty member that wasn't a teacher that was also interested maybe that's an addition I don't know that yeah, I don't know if that right. would be required so that we would have that but right. faculty slash teacher we'll teacher yeah. slash faculty um, a parent that could represent um, the different levels so so that could, ideally could be three ideally one <laughs> would be great um, but up to three yeah yeah we want a parent who has a, a child in we want one parent that has a child in each level, and it could be the same parent, or yeah. maybe three different. Right. The um, levels just being the, th the not the not the individual yeah. schools, but the elementary. It could be a school committee member that has it. Yeah. What's that? Even a school committee member or a teacher could have a student. Again, so, people yeah. can fill multiple slots Correct. when, it, when we come committee. when we get down to making the decision. Couldn't be. Oh, it couldn't. Um, it be the parent. Already. No, I'm saying to be the parent. If one of the two school committee members, like if there was nobody else interested, that was a. And Elementary if school. one of the parents it also has um, a child with a special education, well, that, how about the that? CPAC president? Ooh, yeah, Mr. Can McManus. He would do that. We, we, we <laughs> ask him. I could ask him. I think he's I've strong armed him before. <laughs> he, he he's authorized him. you to speak that, for him at these meetings. Well, I, I think. <laughs> I mean, given his interactions with me, you know, given, think, given his interactions with the superintendent, you know, I yeah. could ask him. Okay. That would be wonderful. Yeah. Um, so that would, yeah, that, that would check a box. For and you. then um, I know I would appreciate having a past school committee member um, there. And I think we can just reach out to those folks ourselves. Yes, yes. yes. Yep. <laughs> so we have two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm -hmm. We don't know the exact ten. number because we don't know the parents. You have a maximum, you have between eight and 10 right now. Yeah. Right. Depending on it, the parents. And I think that's, mm -hmm. I think that's yeah. good. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Could I make a suggestion, Jenny? Yes, please. As far as the notification, and I'll, whatever I write, I'll send to you first okay. before it goes out. But given the election next week, does it make sense, do you want, does it make sense to either defer the inquiry to me and I'll collect the in, you know yeah, and, you and then share that with yeah. with the chairman whomever it is at, you know right you know if it goes beyond the seventh just you know just in case I mean, I'm not, I'm it would sorry. get it uh, would get I'm confusing keep saying. right it might get yeah. confusing if just, someone they can <laughs> they can write to me yeah. I'll just keep a collection of all of the emails and then I'll pass them on to whomever the committee dele okay yeah yes do you, how about a deadline for for the notifications um to express the two weeks from Friday I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> I was going to say I wouldn't go past two weeks. I think if they're interested, most of them would already be almost reaching out. When is our next? Already. When is our next meeting? The thirteenth. Thirteenth. I would actually like even before that, because oh, yeah. if we can get, because I would like to have them so we know for the thirteenth who it is, that we, who's expressed interest. So that's two weeks from today. 
I, I, I think that's doable. Well, you, you, if, if the chair, if the chairman is going to appoint them, right? Isn't that what I heard him say tonight, Mr. Kucher? Yes. The school committee I, chair. Well, I think it could be the school committee chair. It could also be the chair of the subcommittee. Themselves. You won't have that established until the 13th. Correct. But I would like to have the all the information about who's interested for that meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. So just the stack of the emails. Right. So yeah. So if we have that for like. So we could the say time. the deadline is either the Friday before or. Yeah, I would say the Friday before yeah. the 10th. Which is, which is basically two business weeks <laughs> from right. today. Or well, sli I think slightly less if the email goes out tomorrow. And yeah. It, and I, I think, think that's more than enough time. And, like I said. And maybe if we can time, John, get. get on yeah. it. Uh, <laughs> something in the paper for it might be too late for this no nope. should be okay no. yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll speak to Jill tomorrow thank you and she, I can it get, used I, to be Tuesday afternoon right I think, so. I think you'll be okay okay all right so let's just recap at this point we have two school committee members one administrator one faculty slash teacher one parent from each level so either one covered, two or yeah. three three level covered yeah. um and uh, yeah, cpac chair yes and then yeah. one former school committee and i don't think that information has to be in the email right the email is just and i mean i guess with the staff and the it might be a little more specific but to the to the parents it's just anyone who has interest let us know and they don't need to know what the makeup of the committee <clears throat> is yet do they um, they would pro we probably need to know what level they're we would want to know from. that yeah I, my my thought would be is, is in the communication would go out it would say what the makeup of the committee is okay. going to be and or, then or and perhaps if a parent, proposed if a parent yes and if a parent is writing to me to express interest on behalf you know the, to be shared with the committee I could ask them in in your in your notice to me identify <coughs> at which grade level your child yep. is in school okay the, the only other one I ask about is a community member or, or parent because there might be people who's who just had kids that graduated they're no longer a parent of a student but they're they have a lot of experience that their kids recently graduated I, 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 first of all sort of the, the, the you could say the ex, ex school committee member mm -hmm. counts as a community member yeah right. and most likely be, had kids that went through but if there was somebody else who you yeah know, I, again it was a community member was interested you know, I mean, we, we know some people that have come to that, actually come to the meetings more often that have their their yeah. kids have gone through the school. Yeah. And I wouldn't want to exclude them necessarily if they had interest, at least. No. I think there's two things. You're going to get probably bombarded with questions on what is the time commitment for this before I, I was just say yeah, anything. Say so something. I think that that's hard to define right now. I don't know if we need to make some assumptions there because you're just going to get probably I, I'm not saying I you're have right and I think people would want to know that yes. I, I think and I don't think I would be able to tell them that right. on your behalf what I think though is that you know you what you could then do is ultimately when you decide on who you think you might want to appoint you'll have a back there's an assumption that you'll have a backup that if somebody can't make a <coughs> commitment I mean I could put it you know what I'm saying you know if all of a sudden we say this is now going to be the timeline that the committee is going to observe someone might say I, I can't commit to all of that well, then you might have a backup parent. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I see what example. you're saying. Right. Yeah. I think is there, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, oh. I mean, I think it's fair to say that, you know, and again, I'll run all of this by you, Janine, but I think it's fair to say that, you know, that, that, that it's going to be a, you know, I might not use the word exhaustive, but it's going to be a, a significant process. It's going to require a time commitment to on, in, the, in the evenings. And, and we haven't even decided or, the scope yet, which yeah. will right. have a big impact on, the, on right. how much effort is required. Right. Well, we don't even know if it's going to be evenings or it could be for faculty right. and administrators that might be I would think there'd be and especially if there's if depending on how the scope of it it could be school visits which would be middle of the you know on-site visits yeah things like that I mean I don't I don't know so there's going to be a mix of evening and afternoon yeah. meeting probably uh, yeah I think it's yeah. a good way to put it I think yeah I think that's fine uh, you have to have availability both in the afternoons and evenings yeah availability period yeah of availability, no, I mean, you know and, and, and it would be a you know fairly significant time commitment but other than that we can't really I think that's yeah and it's probably over over of course a course of you know Couple eight of to eight to twelve weeks yeah, yeah. I mean it Six could three be months, yeah. so the only other second yeah. part to that from a mitigation standpoint is um, to set the expectation that you might not 
like this is a that you have to be appointed. Yes, so cause, right. Because if folks kind of try to fade a complete, it's not. Yeah. you know, right. I, could you stick your name? You're because on. you're interested, right. doesn't right. mean necessarily. Right. Ultimately, appointments right. will be made based on the level yeah. of interest type of thing. And yeah. yes, right, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Right, you're not guaranteed us. And it's, right. and it's right. also right. not a free election. I just didn't want people to get upset like, if by chance they <laughs> right. weren't. No, all of a sudden I got told no. Yeah. Put that out yeah. there ahead of just time. Just kind of yeah. setting that up front. Yeah. All right. I think that I think you're right. Right. Don't don't, don't don't right. Don't set the expectation up that it's a guaranteed. Yeah. If we kick this, if we kick a search in gear in May, does it slow down in the summertime? It's a good question. I can speak from experience that yeah. it didn't. You know, when my when I was appointed, it was a summer. Yeah. It was a summer thing. In all honesty, I was cognizant of that when I informed you what my plan was, yep. because I do think it is harder to assemble people, particularly in July. So I knew that you'd have time on either end of the summer yep. if you wanted it. Speaking of July, I'm on vacation from June 29th to July 8th. Yeah. So anyway, um, I was just wondering. So when you when we say three months, but it may be could be longer, more four months or, or something. It might stretch into the fall, although that that would be likely because there was a period where there weren't very much going on because of the summer. But we can't really say all that. I'm just saying that's the yeah. I mean, my process was a little unique. I think it yeah. was. It was an internal process only. It was. I think the committee at that time made the decision that anybody that wanted to be on the search committee would be put on. So it was, a tw it was like a 24-member search committee, yeah. and they got them all together in the, and because it was an, in because that one was an internal process, they only interviewed two candidates. Right. So maybe that made it a little, in one night, they did that all in the same night. So that maybe made it, you know, not knowing what your process is going to be, I'm just telling you what happened the last time. Yep. So it was, it was about getting people together on one night in, I don't even, I don't even remember now. It was hmm? like, it was this a weekend night? No, it wasn't a weekend. But I can't remember if it was June or July, honestly. Yeah. My guess is it was July, yeah. and then I ultimately interviewed with the school committee in August. Yeah, and, 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 and I mean, both Mr. Kuchar and I know people that were on that last committee suggested that 24 was far too many people for, for well, that. I think and we're in the right spot that. for them, though. I, I, I right. think, unlike th yeah. that choice, I think we would want to limit it. Right. Okay. Just so many right. practical reasons. Yeah. I agree. It's easier to manage nine people's schedule than 25. <coughs> and, and, and at some point, I, I believe, generally, we would put a process in place where the, the, the whole community would have an opportunity if they wanted to, to interact with, with the candidate. I, I don't know if we did. Did they do that with you? They did. they did. They did, actually. We had a um, kind of like a, um, I'll call it a reception, yep. by, like two hours prior to the school committee meeting. Right. Okay. The one. Yeah. That, yeah. You know, yeah. 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 It was like a 6.30 school <coughs> committee meeting, and at like 4.30, people from the community could come and meet me and yep. talk yeah. to the school committee before yeah. the interview. And then I interviewed for an hour, 45 minutes, something like that. Yeah, I think that's great, because Mr. Kuchar did mention about, you know, opening it up to the community at some point in time, and so we will, even if you're not on the search, on the subcommittee, you'll have an opportunity probably through this process at some point we in time. We even did that for the high school principal too. Yeah, it's a pretty, that's a pretty typical yep. yeah. piece of a process I've seen. Yep. You have like an open, they did it when they hired Kathy Willis. Yeah. Open like I remember that process then. Yeah. So I think even with when Michael came on board, they had fresh fruit, if I remember correctly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that oh, sticks okay. in my mind, but it does. <laughs> it was in, it was in the um, the old library. I remember going and being interviewed in the old library. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <Fresh> sorry. <laughs> I like fresh fruit. We'll have to make sure we have fresh fruit at the at the community meeting. <laughs> All right. So, um, if you could be. I mean, I can tend to be a little verbose in my writing. So just uh, know that you know I'll I'll put something together in the morning. I'll I'll, I'll alert you to when that's ready. The overarching purpose of this email. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do I have to open this one? There are a number of those words that crop up that people tell me I use. Yeah, that's, I'm not laughing about something I heard recently. Um, okay, so I can do that tomorrow. I think I can capture what, what you've all talked about. Today. All right, thank you. So the search begins. Okay. You know, before we adjourn, the only, yeah. other, only other point I would just say is I know that there is an election coming up, so I hope people do go out and vote, and I just 
think it's worth at least noting. I think that it's been a challenging year in some ways that we lost a committee member. We have two new members, and I think your leadership has been very, you know, needed and, and mm-hmm. appreciated. And so, you know, I mean, with a with the hunt for a new superintendent, you know, going on in the next year, I think it would be very nice to have some um, experience. Maybe that you were the only one that is currently on the committee that was on the last, you know, on the school committee the last time a superintendent was hired. And so I guess my, for people to go out and vote and I wish you the best on Thank you. Tuesday. Yes, yes, absolutely. Thank you. No question. <laughs> so. All right, with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you.